Good evening and welcome to our Covenant Healthcare sponsored week nine pregame show here on BCTV. Jeff Dode and Mike Wasdala. And Mike, when you get Central and Western, <laughs> if this doesn't get the hair standing up on your arms, I don't know what will. I'll tell you what, this is the 43rd edition, Jeff, and, and it is a great, great rivalry. Throw the records out of the book. Don't worry about them. These kids are going to go at each other tonight all night long. It's going to be a great football game. We're going to start by talking about the Western Warriors. People look at the record and they go, 0 oh, and 8, they've had a tough season. Well, it starts off with a lot of key injuries early and often in the year. Yeah, a lot of key injuries for the Western Warriors, Jeff. And remember, let's go back to the pregame show when I talked to Jeff Rawl. Five state qualifiers on that schedule this year. So they had a tough schedule. They competed well against some pretty good teams, and they gave their best effort all year long. Through eight weeks this year, they've had to use five different quarterbacks just you know, it's a survive and make things happen. It's no excuse because you've got to be ready to go, but it's tough when you got to go five deep in your roster. Well, you know, when you don't have that consistent quarterback, Jeff, all the time, you know, every quarterback has little nuances about them. They count a little bit different. They hike the ball and catch the ball a little different. So, you know what, but you got to overcome those things. You got to get out the play. You got to lace them up. But, you know what, that, that's tough on a football team. The one constant I've seen from Jeff Rouse's team is effort. And if you have effort, then you can overcome. Yeah, they've given a great effort every week, Jeff, all year long. Preseason, they had a good effort there. So they're going to show up tonight. They're going to give a good effort tonight. Uh, the Western Warriors will be ready to play. If you're not up for your rival, uh, something's wrong. But I guarantee you, they're going to be up. Now you go and turn the page to the Bay City Central Wolves, 4-4 four and four on the year. They smarted for a couple of days with that week seven loss to John Glenn, but they recovered well with a, a late surge last week against Heritage. I'm going to tell you what, Morley Frazier, the coaching staff, the players, they know what's on the line tonight. They absolutely do. Not only is this a rivalry, but, you know, you look at the uh, at the uh, tournament uh, playoff points, they win this game. They could be in the playoffs in, uh, at the number four position in the in Division Three, District 2. So um, this is a big game, not only for the Fireman's Trumpet Trophy against the Western Warriors, but also trying to get into the playoffs with a 5-4 and uh, four record. You look at their offense, and right away you look at B.J. Elder. And <laughs> Brian is a star player. And Coach Frazier, <laughs> it's, a, it's great to have you in the neighborhood. And we, we just started talking about Bay City Central. Get a brat. Have a good time tonight, all right? Congratulations on that big victory last week that put you atop all by yourself. But tonight you look to add to it. That's right. Thanks. Good luck. All the best. Thanks. Well, you just never know well, who's going to pop in here. You never know who's going to be on BCTV. But Brian Elder, second year, playing like a senior with great leadership and great ability. He, he's done a great job this year, Jeff. He's got some good receivers, you know, calm, cool, collected in the pocket. And he's six foot six, and you can see over the linemen, so he's got a good field of vision when he's throwing the football. And he's got some good receivers to throw to also. Well, when you can look downfield and you see the president down there, Washington, and, you know, on the other side of the field, they're very talented. Unique Hudson, the uh, Houston, excuse me, the sophomore running back has also come up big. They just push other buttons here at Central and push go. Well, and, and that's a nice thing to have that Washington is a great weapon on the outside. And Unique Houston is really fast inside, Jeff. But when we saw him the first time against Glenn, I like the way the young man runs between the tackles. He's got some power. But, man, I'll tell you what, he gets outside and it's beep, beep, another gear, and he's gone. Well, and you hear in the background of that voice on the P, hey, Michael Vincent, he's as good as they come as well. Yeah, he's got a great voice, Jeff, and he's been doing a long time. And, you know, you look at the environment tonight, they're starting to come in. It's going to be a good crowd, and this is what rivalry football is all about, and no better place to have it here than Ingle Stadium. We're going to come back on our Covenant Healthcare sponsored pregame show in just a minute. We're going to recap week eight, and boy, do we have some special statistics for you. This one is Wow Factor. We'll be back as our pregame show continues on BCTV. Where did this rash come from? Hold well, on, let me see. Could be bed bugs. Oh. Mom, Grant, says I have bed bugs. Let's see what the doctor says. Introducing Covenant Virtual Care. Real-time video doctor visits, e-prescriptions, and follow-up. Now extraordinary care comes to you. See, it's just poison ivy. Smart advanced. 
Learn more at covenantvirtualcare.com. Good evening and welcome back to our Covenant Healthcare sponsored pregame show here on BCTV. Jeff Doan and Mike Wasdala along with you, Mike. As is our custom, let's look at the recap of last week's activities. All right, Jeff, let's look at uh, week eight. Uh, Mayville beat All Saints 46 to 34. Makes the Cougars 6 and 0 and 6 and 2 overall, Jeff. They got a big one tonight. They're going over to Kindy North Huron for the conference championship on the road. So both teams in the league 6 and 0. Michigan Lutheran Seminary 46, the Pin County area Spartans 6. The Spartans are 2 and 5 and 2 and 6 overall. The Garber Dukes with a big win over the North Branch Broncos, 60 to 47. A game we did on BC TV, Jeff. Boy, that was a wild and wooly game out at Garber last week for homecoming. Boy, we saw history, and we'll talk about <laughs> yes, that in will. just a minute. How about Flint Powers, 31, John Glenn, 14. John Glenn's 3-2 and two in the league, 4-4 four and four overall. Davison, 36, Bay City Western, 0. Bay City Central with a big win, 42-28 over Heritage. They're 3-3 three and three in the league, 4-4 four and four overall. And, uh, Jeff, you know, this is a big game. Bay City Central taking on the Warriors tonight for the Fireman's Trumpet. So there's a lot on the line. Got the trophy and a lot on the line for the Bay City Central Wolves. At 4-4 four and four with a win tonight, they become 5-4 and four on the year. There are 176 teams currently in the playoffs right now out of the 256. That leaves a lot of room for six win teams tonight, but it's also going to open the door for what I'm guessing about 25 to 35 and four teams and both Central and John Glenn are hoping to make that happen. Yeah, John Glenn has uh, got Flint community tonight, Jeff, so they have a good opportunity to go 5-4 and four and nothing but the best wishes for the Bobcats trying to get into the playoffs. Well, they're going to be doing it tonight without Joe Blong. Yep. He suffered a concussion last week, and they're going to have to make it go without him. But before we get any further into the pregame, we're going to go back to North Branch and Garber from last week. 703 total yards for this wonderful young golden helmet winner, Mr. Breidenbaugh. And he is the third highest total in the history of the wow. National wow. High School Federation Association. We're not talking state <laughs> records, Mike. We're talking third in the Good history damn. nationwide. That's how special that game was last week, and we were honored to be able to do it. Yeah, it was really special watching that last week, Jeff. And we knew we had a, he had a lot of yards, and uh, Mr. Sivak was sitting next to us, the uh, gentleman keeping the stats. But, yeah, he did win the gold helmet, golden helmet, 60-47, to 47, Jeff. 28 for 39, 71%, 465 yards, 16 carries for 283 yards. He had, like you said, 703 total yards just for that young man. He had six TDs passing, Jeff, but he was accounted for eight TDs overall. So A 98-yard oh, uh, quarterback sneak yep, for a touchdown yep. as well. It was, it was just absolutely impressive. Never seen anything like it, but uh, he, he just had a wonderful game in front of a big homecoming crowd. Well, and it was a great homecoming victory for them, and to get that type of national recognition yeah. is huge for them. Unfortunately, their season didn't go according to plan, and they're not going to be in the playoffs this year. But Coach Quill's got a great group there, and they're a young group, and they're going to make some noise in the near future. Yeah, the other gold helmet uh, from Bay County, Jeff, was Eric Lehman from Bay City Central. Coach Frazier called him uh, the emotional leader for the team. He had a strong game from his offensive center position and opening up a lot of holes and protecting the quarterback. Also, Eric had uh, six solo tackles and two quarterback sacks in that huge, huge win on the road at Saginaw Heritage, 47-28. Well, the band's about ready to have a combined band pregame show, which will be a thing of beauty. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back with all the pregame festivities. It's week nine. It's Central versus Western. Enough said. The action just ahead right here on BCTV. How's married life? Are you ready to have a baby? Baby, baby. How about that baby? Ooh. I'm not getting any younger. When you are ready, with the only neonatal intensive care unit in the Great Lakes Bay region, Covenant is the safest place for your delivery. Go to mycovenantbaby.com.
long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was a talented band of strange musicians called the Kentia Band. And now please welcome Western senior drum major Katie Dow as she conducts yet another band of strange musicians right here in a galaxy you can reach out and touch. Ladies and gentlemen, here is John Williams' epic theme from Star Wars. the Great American Rivalry Series would like to take a moment to honor the top scholar athletes from each school tonight. As part of the series, the United States Marine Corps will be presenting each player with a college scholarship in recognition of their academic achievement and athletic excellence. To highlight those athletes that work hard on and off the field, the United States Marine Corps is proud to honor the senior player holding the highest academic standing for each team. From Bay City Western High School, congratulations, Mr. Andrew Norfleet. Andrew is a hard-working, out and off the field player and student for Bay City Western. He's currently participating in his fourth football season. And he's received the honor of SBL All Academic. And is a National Merit Commended Student. Con presenting the award is Sergeant Kaplinski. Once again, congratulations, Andrew Northwick. <laughs> From Bay City Central High School, congratulations, Mr. Seth Chesla. <laughs> Seth has a 
runner for the Wolves and is also a member of the Freeman baseball team. He not only works hard on the field, but also off the field. He's dedicated to his schoolwork and is a member of the National Honor Society. Congratulations, Seth Chesla. Also, fans, we have a very special award again this year. The Great American Rivalry Series and the United States Marine Corps are announcing their 14th annual Hall of Fame inductees here at the Bay City Western Central Game. These awards are designed to recognize players and coaches from our past who participated in this great rivalry. From Bay City Western High School, congratulations, Hall of Fame inductee, Cody Basler. During his football career at Western, Cody earned three letters for the Warriors and was the 2002 linebacker for the district championship team. As a senior, Cody had a 10-1 record as linebacker and fullback. After graduating from Western, Cody played for Bowling Green State University from 2005 to 2009. At Bowling Green, Cody was co-captain his senior year, started in all 13 games, and led the team with 85 tackles. In 2009, Cody also earned the Orange Helmet Award and the Captain's Award. Congratulations, Cody Basler. And from Bay City Central High School, congratulations, Mr. Brian Bishop. He was unable to play his finishing football career at Central because of the elimination of sports in the early 1980s. But he went on to play football at Albion College. Upon his return as a teacher and coach, he devoted his whole career to making a positive impact on the students and athletes at Central High School. He is the winningest wrestling coach in the history of Bay County. And he's coached in over 400 football games. And most importantly, he has impacted thousands of students lives at Central. Congratulations, Coach Brian Bishop. <laughs> and finally, ladies and gentlemen, Bay City Central is proud to honor a tremendous member of the best booster club in all of Michigan, the Bay City Central Boosters. In October of 1977, Mr. Don Stein received a letter from the Bay City Central Booster Club welcoming him as their newest member. And to this day, he is still a member of our booster club as well. And he's been treasurer for over 25 years. Don loved sports and wanted to be involved in any way he could. And becoming a member of the booster club was the way for him to do it. He not only performs all of the duties as treasurer, he works in the concession stand for the home football, basketball, volleyball, wrestling, and baseball games. He also grills the very best hot dogs in the valley. John was able to watch his four granddaughters and six of his nine grandchildren graduate from Bay City Central. And his youngest grandson will be a freshman here next fall. We want to thank Don for all of his amazing 40 years of service, volunteering, and total dedication to the betterment of the lives of our students. Most heartfelt thanks, Mr. Don Stein. <laughs> Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps, too? You know how this thing works. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Ben, please? Wow, you can talk to your app? That's pretty cool. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment... No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto Owner's Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency.
Good evening and welcome back. It's week nine. It's time for a little football. What pregame wow. festivities here, Coach? Boy, a lot of things going on, uh, Jeff. We'll talk about them during the game, but a lot of special moments going on here in week nine at Ingalls Stadium. Western nice wins the toss. They've elected to defer to the second half. Bay City Central will get their hands on the football first. Here we go, week number nine with a lot on the line, including bragging rights here in beautiful Bay County. That ball is finally picked up by the Central Wolves back at their own six-yard line. Hemmed in pretty well by the Western Warriors, only getting out to the 20-yard line. Tacklers on the play were led by Bailey Rule as Central will start that ball off deep. Boy, that ball took a couple of funny hops. Yeah, it sure did, Jeff, and uh, they got pretty good field position. North starting right out at the 20, but uh, tough, tough uh, hop, but they got it, and so here we go. First and 10 for the Central Wolves at their own 20 yard line. Brian Elder as Brian Bishop, a much deserved recipient of that great award. Just uh, comes up as he's heading up top as we go to the outside. It's unique Houston as he gets to the outside and he is pushed out of bounds right in front of the Western faithful. And uh, they're there in their orange tonight. <laughs> they do it all the time every proud. year. They do it every year, Jeff. They come in their orange, a nice game by Houston, knocked out of bounds by number 73, Wade Witzko. He had a good game the first time we saw him this year, Jeff. Good game by the Wolves, second down and uh, six. Under center. They give that ball to Unique Houston, and look at the Western Warriors just absolutely swarm to the football at the point of attack, not allowing a whole lot of activity as those white numbers are going to be tough to see tonight. In on the hit amongst the others is going to be, well, Ralph, as I tried to spit it out. That's a familiar name. Oh, yes, it is part of the lineage. Yes, it is. Third down and four yards to go. Brian Elder, back to pass. Look at how much time he's got to throw the football. He's downfield. He's got an open receiver. That is number 13. DeVille going into the end zone. It is a Bay City Central. Touchdown. Touchdown. But we got a flag on the play at the 29-yard line. And it looks like it's going to be coming back. As that ball was absolutely perfectly thrown to Justin wow. Morse as he took off downfield. I think we're going to have an eligible downfield. Yeah. 75 yards right on the money, Jeff. Great protection for Elder on the uh, play fake, and uh, he put it right on the money. But illegal man downfield is going to ne negate that touchdown by Bay City Central. Wow. wow. <laughs> That was just Woo. an unbelievable play. And talk about the height and the peak of excitement and bringing it right back down. As that play comes back, a five-yard penalty. He's going to make it third down and 10 yards to go for Bay City Central. That just gives you an idea between Judson Morse and Devell Washington oh what type of talent they've got at the wideout. And uh, nice protection by the offensive line, Jeff, of Bay City Central. Devell Washington here to the near side. Now they're going to run him wide. As they're going to run a little pitch pass, trying to get that ball downfield. It's a little bit underthrown, and it will be incomplete. Incomplete as that ball hit the ground. A great effort that time by number 41 on the play. Yep. As uh, Brandon Bellinger, Brendan just got his hands on the ball, and when he got to the ground, could not sustain it. But I'm going to tell you what, if that double reverse pass wide open down here, the receiver for Bay City Central. Well, the, the young man from Central, I didn't see who threw it, Jeff, but he had somebody nipping at his ankle, so he couldn't really step into it and get what he wanted. But Washington was wide open. What a great call by Coach Frazier. Boy, they're gone deep in the playbook here in the first quarter. Central with a three and out in punt formation. And that punt is off. We've got another penalty flag down on a false start on Bay City Central. And Boy, I don't know yeah. how you get uh, a false start when you're just standing at the line of scrimmage ready to defend the pass or the punt. That five-yard penalty will yep. move the ball back again. Back to the 15-yard line. A couple of penalties have bitten Central early. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tough penalty right there. Jeff going to move him back five yards. and uh, But really, two, a big penalty on that 75-yard touchdown. We're going to write that 75 down, so we're going to say yep. that is lost yardage. 
Little Australian kick here. Look at that great boot and look at the roll as that thing is going to go plus 18 yards from where the last one ended up right out here around the 42-yard line. So this one goes down to the 37-yard line. Talk about really being able to shift field position with that great kick and the roll after the kick. Well, keeping it away from Brendan Ballinger, Jeff, uh, is uh, the punter for the Wolves. But Brendan had a good game when we saw him against Saginaw High. So first and 10 for the Warriors at their own 37-yard line. They come away with good field position. Look at the stripes out here tonight, too. They're sporting their short sleeve shirts oh, out yeah, here. And I'll tell you what, when you see that in week number nine, you know <laughs> special weather hey, out there. I'll tell you what, beautiful night for football. Jeff, a little bit of wind coming out of the south, uh, directly out of the south. So good crowd on hand, late arriving crowd, fashionably late, as we like to say. Looks like Carter Bocicalupo to start things off for the Western Bars. That ball down to the ground. And they're fighting for the loose ball right now. Do not know who's got their hands on it. Have not seen any indication. Looks like Western lucky enough to get their hands back on that ball. As a little bit of those uh, first possession nerves coming. As the Western Warriors ball carrier on the play is number 25. And we don't have one for them. Yeah, we'll get that number from the uh, golden pen down to our left, Jeff. He's always got a plethora of information. Well, we didn't get anything out of... Uh, Mr. Vincent as well, so they're going to have other people go oh, yeah. to check on it, and they'll let us know on their way back down. Second down and nine. Hand up with a small hole there up over the 40 to the 41-yard line. The Western Warrior offense trying to eke their way through. Eric Lehman with the initial hit off of the tackle on number 41, Brendan Bellinger. And the Bellinger's one of those people that they like to get a little seam to, and he can get a little yards after contact. Yeah, I like him, Jeff. He had a good game when we saw him against Saginaw High. And looking for a good big game tonight from number 10, the uh, senior Parker Rivard, the wide receiver, the six foot seven wide receiver. Expect big things out of him tonight also, Jeff. But they have got to find a way to mix it up as we see the brain trust of the Bay City Western Warriors, Jeff Rowell. He is one of our all-time favorites. He's a great individual, and he's worked hard with his group. Going right up the middle, absolutely stuffed at the point of attack with a penalty flag down. And uh, they are going to have a loss on the play. What do we have here, though? Is he going to call a face mask? If he does, I think he's motioning it as being a five-yard, but they're calling it on the offense, and I think Central will be glad to decline sure. it. Sure. Have it right in front of the referee right down here below us, Jeff. It's going to be holding against the Warriors. They're going to decline. Western will have to punt, punt it back to the Bay City Central Wolves. It'll be fourth down and seven yards to go. Has three and out for both teams offensively, but, uh, boy, you saw Bay City Central. Boy, they went to the back page of the book well, on the first series. You know, I don't think I've ever seen a double reverse out of Coach Frazier in, with a pass. in, in his 32 years. With a pass. Wow, and a it. pass. Western set to punt from their own 41-yard line. Good exchange, limited pressure. There's a low kick, and that's going to take a bounce. And Bay City Central is going to be able to return that ball from their own 13-yard line. Trying to come upfield. Very, very well defended by the Western Warriors. They'll have the Central Wolves back deep in their own end at about the 14-yard line. At that point, it'll be first and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves as they're minus six from the start of their first possession. Good tackle and special teams by number 31, Jeff. Another familiar last name, Jacob Lytle. That's been a familiar name out there in the Western Warrior uh, territory. So first and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves at their own 15-yard line. 8.45 to go here in the first quarter, no score. Central moving it out right now with twins to the near side and twins to the far side. Elder with a quick in pass. Look at the great hands in the reception for a gain of about seven yards. And the Bay City Central Wolves didn't catch the number of that youngster yet on the catch. And that is number 24 on the catch, Zavala, Marcos Zavala. I'll tell you what, he went up with great hands. That young man went up high and caught that ball for a nine-yard gain. Number 25 for the Warriors, Jeff, is Blake Mitzrick for the Warriors. So we'll remember that name. We'll write Me it check. down on our on our, uh, on our uh, roster here. Fumble. Ball down on the ground. It's all white around the football as the sophomore coughs up the football. And it looks like it's going to be recovered by the Western Warriors as they are going to have a short field. I think they're going to credit number 74, yep. Sanek, with the reception of that 
fumble recovery. Well, I'll tell you what, we've seen a little bit of everything in the first uh, few minutes of this ball game, Jeff. A couple fumbles, uh, penalty for a big touchdown uh, brought back. So, hey, good field positions for the Warriors inside the 25-yard line of Bay City Central. Parker Rivard to the wide side of the field. Double wing, single back offense. Motion to the near side of the field. Penalty flag down as Bocicalupo looked like he was going to run an option. And we've got a movement on the offense prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty will move them back. It'll be first and 15. As Western just gave away five valuable yards of real estate. Well, do you think there might be just a skosh of nervousness on these kids tonight, Jeff? There's a lot on the line. Central's looking for a playoff. What a big way to end the season for Bay City Western and getting the, uh, getting the trophy. Fashionable late arriving crowd oh, yeah. tonight as this stadium is filling in <laughs> nicely. <laughs> yes, it is. And... Uh, it's kind of like the L.A. Laker crowd, Jeff. They come, wow. you know, they're just fashionably late, looking good while they're coming in. All right, double wing set up again. Pachicalupo with the pitch, trying to get upfield, and not a lot of real estate for the running back, and that's Trevor Newmeyer. As Newmeyer picks up a modest gain on the play, he got back three of the five from the penalty. It'll be second down and 12 yards to go as Bay City Central sniffed that out pretty well. Well, I'm looking at the wind, Jeff. It was coming out of the south, going right to left, and now that wind has just completely died. Oh, glory down in the the uh, southeast end zone. She is That flag is just picking up a little bit, but it has really calmed down here since the uh, football game started. Second down, 12 yards to go. Pachigalupo under center with a single back again. He takes a five-step drop, and he gets that ball out to Parker Rebard. He catches the ball. He's down to the 13-yard line with a nice grab. And, boy, I'm going to tell you, that's a target. When you got a quarterback that can hit 6-7 with glue for hands, that's a beautiful thing. Well, and you look at that wingspan, Jeff. The young man's got the wingspan of a 787, so he can go up and get it. Let him do his thing. Let him go up. Let him get it. Nice hands. Nice catch by Parker. First and 10 for the Western Warriors as they're down inside the 14-yard line. to call it officially the 13-yard line, and that's what they want to do. They want to control the ball, controlled passing, move the sticks, keep the clock moving, and see if they can hit pay dirt. Yep, keep that powerful West or central offense off the field. There's the ball carrier on the play. Down inside, 5-4-3-2-1. Into the end zone. It's a Western Warrior. Touchdown. Touchdown. Number 42, Austin Schley. He just hit that ball off the left guard. Saw daylight cut back across the grain. Virtually untouched into the end zone for the Warrior touchdown. Big fellas up front, Jeff, for the offensive line from for the Western Warriors. Nice hole for the running back, Shway, to go in there. Big touchdown, big confidence builder early for the Western Warriors. Attempt for the extra point. Snap is good, the kick is low, but it is up. It's just wide to the left and no good. Time out of the field was six and 56. Left in our first quarter of play, the Western Warriors hit pay dirt first. They're on top six to nothing. Back in a moment here on BC TV. AAA Transport and Limousine is the Great Lakes Bay region's most reliable and requested service. We provide many types of transportation services from non-emergency medical, wheelchair accessible, school transport services, and shuttle services. Our company strives to provide exceptional service to our customers. Our services are tailored to each person or company's specific needs. For the last 10 years, we have pushed the mark higher and higher to give the best service possible. Rest assured that you are in safe hands when you ride with AAA Transport and Limousine. Back here on BCTV, Jeff Dode and Mike Wasdala along with you, Jared and Natalie Doan upstairs on the camera work, and Nick Page producing and directing the program tonight. Western Warriors with pay dirt first. We'll have a low line drive kick and that'll take a much more favorable hop for the Bay City Central Wolves. Trying to get to the outside, really not much there. Slamming the door is Taylor Pop. That sophomore, I'm going to tell you what, you better circle that kid's name and number for the next two years. He is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, that young man is a good football player, Jeff. Garrett Glish on the kickoff return. Good coverage again by the special teams of the Bay City Western Warriors. They are fired up, Jeff. They are playing some good football here in the first quarter. 
This is a game of momentum and emotion. Yep. And both right now, Central got it early, but the penalty brought that back and really changed the perspective here early in the first quarter. But we're not even to the halfway point of quarter number one. Hand off by the Bay City Central Wolves. They've got a crease. Sliding downfield and up to midfield with the carry. Unique Houston says that is going to make things easy. And things are just a little chatty down there, Mike, right in front of us. Well, you know, these kids see each other during the year, Jeff, and uh, walking down the street. So this is a big robbery, like we said in the pregame. They could be 0-8, both of them, or they could be 8-0, and it's going to be very, very physical and uh, a good football game. First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves. Unique Houston really squeezed the air out of that football on that carry for Central. Offset eye back formation. Three-step drop. Washington on the outside. He breaks the tackle. He's got the first out and more as he makes another miss. He's down inside the 30, down inside the 20-yard line, down to the 16-yard line. The sensational sophomore making people miss. And what does he do? He sees the cameraman <laughs> down there from TV. He gives them a little slap and a little low five on the way by. Going, oh, I hope you got my good side uh, there. Seeing my jersey from the back. I, I think he got his good side there, Jeff. Happened right in front of him. What a nice job. And that's, you know, that's out there. He's out there on an island right there. Osby is lonesome. Good old-fashioned stiff arm. Good first down for the Bay City Central Wolves. You make that first person miss, and we're going to have the Western Warriors taking their first time out of the ball game. We're going to keep it right here and thank our friends from Village Towing. All right, Jeff. Again, Village Towing coming on board this year to help us out. Village Towing is one of the uh, best towing companies in the area, Jeff. Two locations, one on 2377 South Huron Road called Collin, and the other location is 706 State Street in Bay City, Michigan. Roadside assistance for jump starts, lockouts and breakdowns, brake repair, air conditioning repair, engine repair, oil change, custom exhaust, and semi and commercial towing. From small to big, they haul it all and they do it all. And uh, Michelle Cooper and gang out there, great people, and we like yep. to thank them for jumping on board this season for Bay County TV. As out of that timeout, Coach Rao was not pleased with this defense tackling, and he says, fellas, if we don't tackle him first, we saw what he makes yeah. after the catch. He is a, he's a good yak guy, Jeff. As uh, the ball goes to Houston, Houston makes one miss. He's got a burst of speed. He's at the 10. He cuts back across the green. 5 4 3 2 1. Unique Houston's into the end zone. It's a Bay City Central. Whoa! Touchdown! Boy, you talk about an answer in a hurry. Bay City Central with that answer. Now they're going to go for the extra point as uh, they have got a very, very unique and strong legged Austin Welter for their extra points. Great block in the end zone, Jeff, by the central player number 13, Judson Morris, keeping the defensive back. You know, didn't pancake him, just kept him busy. Easy run into the end zone for Houston. So he's going to have the extra point hold. Oh, look out for it's the police up guard. And it's just past the police <laughs> guy. He might not have a safe spot to park. Time on the field with 6 and 14 left. Hey, Gwiz, that was less than a 40-second drive for the wow. Bay City Central Wolves. As they come up 7-6, to six, we'll take a quick break and be back right after this on BCTV. Sports give so many opportunities to kids. It gives them an opportunity to see where they fit within a team, persevere, understanding how to work with different personalities. Those are the lessons that will make you a successful adult. As a mom, you have to have an understanding of what concussions are. Concussions are things that are treatable. If we take care of athletes, they will be able to develop and have a long, happy, healthy life. Back here on BCTV, Jeff Toad and Mike Wasdala along with you. Austin Welter with a high, deep end over end kick. It's going to be taken on about the 11-yard line by the Western Warrior offense. Trying to come up field, they make the first one Wait. miss, but filling in a hurry is number 34, Spencer Maltrip. He's coming with a little how-do tackle on the play. Man, Spencer was on a mission, Jeff. He came a long ways. He never put on the brakes. What an outstanding tackle by that young man. First and 10 for the Western Warriors at their own 27-yard line. You know what? That was Marcus Zavala, number 24, not number 34. Both of these teams wow. with those uh, uniform colors, the white for Western, the gold numbers are really tough for they us are. to pick up, so it's going to be a test on the old peepers tonight. <laughs> we have to get the binoculars out a little more often. 
Pachacalupo with the handoff and uh, trying to go over the right side for little or no gain was the running back for the Western Warriors, number 25. Oh, uh, that's Carter. We'll, we'll get it again, Jeff. Dwight, I think his it's first Blake, name is Dwight. Blake Michek. Michek, yeah. Okay, that's exactly what it is. Yep. In on the tackle for the Wolves, number four. That was uh, Jaden Pavlock. We got that down on our roster now, so we should be all set. Pachkalupo with a quick pitch. Look at Bay City Central maintaining contain on that play. That play was flowed right into Eric Lehman's grill house, but only because of the expert contain on the outside by the outside backer. And I'm waiting for the young man to turn around so that I can give him kudos. That is number 26 on the play. Marcus Facundo really held his ground on the outside and a trost out here as well with a very nice play. Just don't let him get outside you, Jeff, and then make him cut back to all those beautiful purple helmets for the Central Wolves, and that's what that's what you're looking for. Your buddies are coming with those helmets. Boy, we'll look right now to the near side. They've got Parker Rivard with a skinny post with man coverage. Not much going on there, and we have got a penalty flag, and almost every time when you see the umpire throw the flag, it's going to be one of three players, Mike. Well, it's going to be the center and the two guards. <laughs> I'm 12 for 12, brother. You, you have you, <laughs> superseded my expectations. Yeah, I've year. superseded my expectations. <laughs> and that's going to be a decline of the penalty because uh, basically Central watched their hands back on the football. Yeah, that was uh, holding right at the point of attack, Jeff. Like you said, the umpire's right there, and he's only looking at three people, the center and the two guards. But again, Western will punt of the way. Central will give come back with good field position. Back for the Wolves is number 19, Garrett Glish, the junior. As Glish will be looking for a little bit of real estate to bring that back, he's got good hands. And uh, very sure-handed and be able to make a return here. The Western Warriors find themselves in another punt situation with 4 and 46 left in our first. Well, Central they got with it. a block. And that looks like Maltrup. He's down inside the 10. He's sniffing the goal line. Stretches out. He's into the end zone. It's a Bay City Central. Wall touchdown. That is Spencer Maltrup. They, they had it set up, Jeff. Glish was coming up. He didn't care if they kicked it or got out of the way. He was coming up, and Maltrop just came through, did a great job laying out, getting his hands on the football. What a big block for the Bay City Central Wolves. What an extremely big play indeed as they get a 13-6 lead with 4 and 36 left in our first quarter of play. Looks like Central might be one short out on the field for the extra point. Well, I'll tell you what, special teams, offense, defense, we've seen a lot of things happening right here, Jeff. They're looking for the special teams. Got to get the right football. You, uh -huh. know, you know those football kickers, they're a little persnickety. Well, they got to have the right pig skin That's before right. they can kick that thing a mile. <laughs> Let's see where uh, Mr. Welters kicks this one. Last time he also almost got the Bay City Police Cruiser. Now they've got somebody back there to chase that ball down, and he's a good 30 yards behind the goal post. <laughs> I want to see so, him put it on 13th Street. <laughs> see, see if that thing will be a souvenir over the fence. There's a high snap. Judson Morris does a nice job of bringing it down. The extra point is up and good. Time out of the field with four and 36. Left in the first, Bay City Central 14, Western 6. Back in a moment here on Bay County TV. <laughs> My joints feel out of work. Ow, oh, ow, oh, oh my, the pain, the pain. I can't take it anymore. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Doden, Mike Wasdala, the central student section just looks a little bit joyous at the moment <laughs> they are having a good time jeff and we talked about the weather absolute october 20th kickoffs uh temperature 73 degrees 
Outstanding. Thing of beauty. The only thing better will be when we win the 50 50. That's right. You're absolutely There's right. There's a high, deep kick, and it hits on the one yard line, rolls into the end zone. No return even possible on that. What a weapon to have as your kicker. It really is, and, uh, Jeff, to have a kicker like that, to be able to put it in the end zone and trust him on the field goal and extra points. Fantastic job by number nine, Austin Welter. That is a great weapon to have. Now it's time for the Western Warriors to come up with a, a couple of plays. They need to sustain a drive. And I really feel like one of the keys to that drive is big number 10 out there, that big target. Central looks like they're loading up on the run, and they've got some man coverage opportunities. Western comes with a little different look right now, trying to spread things out. Single wing with twins to the wide side and a single to the near side as they've got an offset eye back. Bacicalupo is going to run the ball right up the middle and look at the central defense. Absolutely shuts that down. Eric Lehman is there in a hurry along with uh, Dylan Jones. They just absolutely had that play snuffed. Western, I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to spread the defense out. Central's defense right now, Mike, looks like they're stop the run first and worry about the pass well, later. Yeah, they're one-on-one -on -one out there, Jeff. They had six helmets to the football and uh, they just stopped that right there. No gain on the play, second down and 10 for the Western Warriors. As again, they're gonna go to that same formation. As a split right next to the quarterback. Bocicalupo's back to pass and that ball's overthrown and it's picked off the 10. Five, four, three, two, one, into the end zone. It's the Bay City Central. Whoa, touchdown! Judson Morse with Bocicalupo throwing an air pass really went in between the two offensive players and Judson Morse just sitting back there and he picked that thing off and went untouched, tiptoeing down that far eastern sidelines for the touchdown. Block punt, defensive touchdown, Jeff. Offensive touchdown, you're seeing it all from the Bay City Central Wolves. What a turn of events. Central scores first, 20 to six, 345 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, Western gets on the board first, Central with three quick answers. Yeah. Walter with the extra point attempt. Judson Morris after that pickoff. He says, I got good hands and that ball's going up. It's deep, is that gonna go just over the cruiser again? <laughs> <laughs> Time out of the field with three and 45 left in the first quarter of play. 21 to six, Bay City Central scoring three touchdowns in less than three minutes of football here to take a lead in the first quarter, but a whole lot of football left back in a moment here on BCTV. You're up. There's an old saying, you can never have too many officials. The age of the average official is 52 and getting older all the time. We're constantly recruiting new people, younger people to join us. After you register with the MHSAA, look on the website to find an officials association near you. They'll put you in a position to succeed as an official. We all learned a lot from high school sports, and officiating is a great way to give back to the game. There's help wanted, just whistle. Welcome back here on Bay County TV. You're looking at the brain trust of Bay City Central. Winning as coach last week in Bay City Central football history with 166 wins. He said, I'm not satisfied with 166. I'm looking this week for 167. Man, I remember when he walked through the door, Jeff, 32 years ago when I first met him. Good man, good football coach. Son of a football Son coach. Son of a football coach. And that's a great compliment. As that ball does not go 10 yards and Western will jump on it. As Bay City Central looked to really take command of this football game early, but the ball did not go 10 yards, and Western will be the recipient of very, very favorable field position. Yeah, Jeff, that ball, like you said, didn't go 10. They will start inside Central Territory at about the 40 six yard line 47 yard line 343 to go here in the uh, first quarter western scores first central says we can do it too they score three in a row 21 to 6 central with the lead it's been a good football game though very it, exciting it has been western goes back to the double wing single back offense Trying a little counter action and absolutely nothing there. Look at three central players in the backfield getting penetration to blow that play up before MB City Central's Jaden Pavlock with the tackle. Well, it didn't look like it was a very good snap, Jeff. It looked like it was fumbled between the center and the quarterback. So that kind of broke the play down a little bit. They'll give them one second down to nine for the Warriors. Blake Michek once again was that ball carrier. 
And I really still feel like one of the keys to this ball game is six foot seven right here on the near side of the field. You can throw up a 50-50 ball, and he's going to be an 80-20 oh, yeah. on that ball. As they come, they throw it to the outside, and that ball is overthrown again. As a little conversation going on right now, as look at young Mr. Meechek. The young man says, absolutely want to just calm my players down. And uh, you cannot lose your cool out no. here on the field. Uh, if you lose your cool, that puts you further behind. Yep, that's uh, you got to keep your emotions in check, Jeff. This is a this is a big football game for both teams, and it always has been. I had the opportunity not to play in one of these games, but I had an opportunity to coach in one of these games. And I'll tell you what, it is intense. It is nothing more finer than to be on the field <laughs> at this game. It is, and the pressure, the excitement, the momentum, and the emotion. I think they're going to try and come back out here to Parker Rivard again. That pass sailed a little bit as uh, they're going to try and make things happen. Pitch coming to the near side of the field. Look at the central pursuit to the football. Absolutely, Eric Lehman has that play snuffed with great pursuit down the field. We've got a Western Warrior down on the play, and that is uh, Trevor Newmeyer. Yeah, Trevor was hit by a couple of the Central Wolves right there, Jeff. Nice job by the training staff of Central to come out and help him across the field. Here comes the Western training staff. Boy, and that's going to be fourth down and nine yards to go. Really not quite in a position yet as the Western band there. And I'll tell you what, Mike, when we heard that band a few weeks ago yep. against Saginaw High, wow factor with the way that the sound of that band and the precision, they were a treat to watch. Yeah, Craig Heidenberg's the band director out there at Bay City Western. Jeff, there's a student central dress in their familiar orange. But it was a pleasure to watch them a couple weeks ago against Saginaw High. And a great pleasure. We had a great pregame show with both bands on the field and we know we're going to have a treat at halftime well we're going to take a break as new Myers down on the field right now and we'll be back in just a moment here on bctv i thought i'd lost my business in that fire but my agent was there before the flames were out he said together we're going to rebuild we've got 25 employees who depended on it and that's all that mattered to me my independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Doan and Mike Wasdala along with you and Young Mr. Newmeyer took a shot. His helmet came off. We don't know if there was potentially contact after the helmet came off as well. But uh, he is on the central sideline. It took them a while to get him up, and they just brought him to the shortest place to sit down. And uh, it's good to see the Bay Regional Medical Center ambulance here yep. as uh, they have graciously donated their time for every home game, and that is a, a very comforting thing to know they're there. We hope they don't have to be used, but great to have them. Fourth down, a punting situation for the Western Warriors. Low snap. It's up, and there'll be a kick that'll come down. Bay City Central gets by the first. Looking to move upfield. Breaks a couple of tackles up over the 20-yard line. Is number 19, Glish. Well, that Garrett Glish is uh, slick. Reckless abandon, too, Jeff. He's a little slickery. He is, too. And he's <laughs> quite the baseball player, too. We saw him oh, last yes. spring. So Central going to come away with good field position at the uh, – about the 24, 23 yard line. First and 10 for the Wolves. Jeff, 234 to go here in the first quarter. Boy, Central really has not been blessed with great starting field no. position here in this first quarter. Mike, there's still 2 and 34 left in our first quarter. It seems like it should be almost halftime. You don't have to work tomorrow, do you? No. Well, yeah. I got to be out to John Glenn to ref some uh, well, basketball at 10 o'clock. You don't have to be so. up at 4 o'clock, so no. that's a good thing. That is uh, much better. Sleep it until 7 30. <laughs> Elder back to pass. He's going to be throwing that ball deep. He's got Judson Morse back. Morse just can't hang on to the the ball is that ball hung up for just a second too long as elder had him but that safety rotated back and came up with a big play in the middle 
And that would be Jacob Lytle there to help make that play not work. You know, when Elder steps into it, Jeff, Brian Elder just threw that ball from where he threw it down the field. He threw that ball 50 yards in the air on a dime right there. And that was a one heck of a throw. Good defensive back uh, field play by the Bay City Western Warriors. I'm calling draw here. Second down and 10. Coach. Unique Houston gets the ball. We got a penalty flag down, but we're going to have a first down with a 12-yard rush on the play. Tacklers were led on the play by Sinek. And I believe they're going to get Bay City Central for a holding penalty, and Western will be more than happy to take that. I finally am right, Coach. How many times in a row have I been wrong? <laughs> I finally I get can't one count right, that and high. they call it back with a hold. <laughs> I can't. You've been wrong. Wrong, I can't count that high. Well, French right? would be the term. We <laughs> have been wrong. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. That's why we're up here, and they're down there coaching. See, the law of average on, yeah, on yeah. occasion, Coach, catches up with us. Great call, though, is uh, – Unique Houston does a nice job of making that first person miss, and then he hits that second gear. Well, Coach Frazier can't be real happy with the penalties that his team's occurred, uh, incurred so far, Jeff. Uh, but, again, it's second down, and we're going to call it 23. they got to go all the way out to about the 33-yard line. As Washington on the reverse cannot get away from the first. Western had that play snuffed out, and they're going to get a 15-yard late hit penalty on the other end. There's a bit of frustration, and that's going to be a penalty that will take most of the 15 back that they, they lost 10. Where it's at right now, they're going to go plus three with the penalty on a 15-yarder from that spot. Nice job by number 73, Wade Witzko, the sophomore defensive line, Jeff. Maintained where his presence, where he was supposed to be. Didn't uh, go with the fake on the, uh, turn, on the runaround and did a nice job on the reverse staying home. And it's still going to be second down. Now second down and nine. Well, I think they're trying to signal third, but I got to believe it's still it second is. down. They're going to call it a dead ball foul. Yeah, they, okay. switched it, they switched it down. So essentially they lost a down but gained 15 yards. Yeah. So I'd say that's at I'll least take a that. fair trade. With 2.09 left of the first quarter, Central will take a timeout. We'll take one as well and be back in a minute here on BC TV. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Toad and Mike Wasdala along with you. Jared and Natalie Doan up on the cameras. Nick Page producing and directing. Elder back to pass. He throws that ball high, and if he would have put a little bit of touch on the hat, they had wide open glitch on that play. But the ball sailed just a little bit on Elder, and it'll be four down. Had the right play called. Just missed that pass. Well, I just happened to be looking over at the other side of the field, Jeff, and number one, Devell Washington, he was doing a little 15, 16 down and in. He was wide open, but Elder didn't see him. He was focused. He looked at his first two uh, options, and he stayed with it. But fourth down and long, Central's going to have to punt away for the first time tonight. Second time tonight they'll Excuse be punting. Me, second is that time. The, uh, that ball is hit at about the 47-yard line. That's a way to use your head, number 23. Well, we know where the ball, ball went up. out of bounds, but we're going to say it uh, went out of bounds. It was touched before it went out of bounds. Right. And they're going to uh, say that it happened at midfield. They like to keep it on the yard lines. It'll be first and 10 for Western again, Mike, with a buck 59 left in the first. Western with great starting field position. They have got to take advantage. Yeah, they have, uh, they've They've had pretty good field position uh, all night long, Jeff, but this is a very good field position right at the 50, and here we are. We are right on top of the action here in the press box. What a, what a great shot. Number five, Doty here to the near side of the field, the junior. And we're going to have illegal participation. 12 men on the field. We know that that's much better to call that pre-snap because that's five instead of post-snap is 15-yard <laughs> penalty. So you look at it and you go, oh, I hate to get that, but the fact that they got it before the play saves them 10 yards. 
a valuable real estate. Oh, wow. Well said. <laughs> You're on your A game. Oh, yeah. Well, nine games in, but I'm not say, shocked. I hope that we're in two and a half or nine <laughs> games. <laughs> Western with twins to the wide side of the field. Handoff up the middle oh. for a couple of yards. Goes to uh, Taylor Pop. Pop got about three yards on the play before Bay City Central gets to the football. Pavlak with the initial hit defensively as he has been everywhere tonight. You, you can hear that hit up here. Jeff Lehman was there and Pavlak and a host of Wolves. But another good run by the running backs for Bay City uh, Western. With gain of a little bit, second down and 13 for the Warriors. A lot of good hitting going on tonight, Jeff. Yes, indeed. Second down and 13 yards to go. Again, you've got a big target in the junior Doty to the near side. You've got Parker Rivard to the wide side of the field. Let's see if Bacicalupo can make something happen as they have that pitch on the outside and absolutely shut down as Brendan Bellinger gets hit in the backfield by Bay City Central as they just get to the football in a hurry. And that looked like on that tackle, was that Maltrip? Yep, number 34. Spencer Baltrup with a, a big play defensively, not giving up contain on the outside and making a big play. Nice job by Spencer, you know, taking on the block, Jeff, and, and just kind of stringing it out, then getting rid of the block or making the big tackle. When he's able to shed a block that's right there, you know, you've got to hope that that offensive player can neutralize the defender and allow him to get around it. Bocciolupo back to pass with time to low it downfield. The pass is complete. Has a huge gate on the play, and there it is again. Parker Rivard with a big catch. Great adjustment. Parker Rivard knew where that ball was, came back to the football, and made a huge catch. I told you pregame, Coach. <laughs> the MVP right? for Western tonight, if they can win, is going to have to be Parker Rivard. Well, that's the old back shoulder throw right there for uh, the Warriors. Bocciolupo put it right where he had to. Great catch by Parker Rivard. Pachigalupo with a little room to the outside. Can't quite turn the corner. Moultrup getting over there again defensively to minimize that game. It looked like uh, originally that Pachigalupo was going to be able to get around the corner. Coming out of the ball game for the Wolves. Lost his helmet. Number 14, Caleb Dawson. He'll have to sit for one play, Jeff. Caleb had a nice game against the Bobcats last That's week. That's the end of our first quarter of play and our score, the Bay City Central Wolves 21, Western Warriors 6. Back in a minute for the second quarter of Week 9 right here on Bay County TV. All right, this is Adam. Take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Back here as you look at the scoreboard, it's got 12 minutes left. Quarter number two starting, Mike, and this has been a long first quarter of football. Yeah, it was very long, Jeff. We had a uh, nice pregame show and uh, had a long first quarter, but really a good first quarter. Bay City Western scored first, went up six to nothing. But from that point on, Bay City Central put 21 points on in their uh, possessions and did a nice job getting back in this game and getting the lead. Western has got to finish drives. They're able to move the ball a little bit. But uh, look right now, double team right now on Parker Rivard. Now they're coming with Moultrup on the blitz. And he is going to have the sack. Ball picked up by Bay City Central. Down the field, going to go virtually untouched into the end zone, number 51. Mark Tollback, he's into the end zone. It's a Bay City Central. Whoa! Touchdown! 70 big yards, Jeff, for that big hit on Bocciolupo. Big touchdown again for the Central Wolves. Moultrup came around the corner. Running back really held him a little bit, trying to slow him down, but Moultrup had a full head of steam. He hit Bocciolupo, couldn't even see him coming. Yeah, Bocciolupo never saw him coming, Jeff, because he was looking away from where Moultrup was coming. And another big defensive touchdown for the Bay City Central Wolves. Sian <laughs> Misak Tolbert with a huge pickup. He'll not score an easier touchdown in his career. <laughs> 27 to 6 as Central scored their first touchdown. They got possession with 6 and 56 left in the first quarter. 
scored in 42 seconds, and they have just put it on ever since. Spencer Moultrup, he's going to go for a little golden helmet. You know, he's oh, yeah. got himself Might some well. big plays. Block punt, sack, and a fumble. And now Welter with the extra point. Oh, I know what he's trying to oh, do. That's oh, right. he did it. It's on the roof. <laughs> oh, Daddy said in pregame. He says, I can just tell by the way my boy's kicking the ball. He's going to try and waste one on the roof. It's Dad off. wasn't happy about it, but bingo, bango, bongo. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been the goal of kickers at Bay City Central when you're kicking towards the gymnasium area is to put that ball on the roof. Go back to Michael White in his days when he was kicking the extra points. Now, Coach, you know, you, you go way back to the custodial days. Where's the opening on that roof? Oh, and who's got to go up and get that I've ball? I've been up there before, brother. <laughs> I know where to go. I know where to go. Oh, boy, the Bay City Central <laughs> Wolves with 28 unanswered points in this first half have just been unbelievable. This train is certainly rolling right now. And if uh, they continue this during this game and carry it into next week, they're going to be fun to play in the playoffs. Yeah, this is uh, this is a good football team, Jeff, and they're clicking on all cylinders right now. Western is going to get the ball. they got to do something special here in, here in the second quarter. Walter set to kick off for Bay City Central, and he's got that thunder toe. He's going to kick this one high and short, though, and allow the opportunity for the return from the 12-yard line. There's a little crease up the middle for the Western Warriors. Nice return out to the 35-yard line. Well, I tell you, Brendan Ballinger, Jeff, for the Warriors, he has got some speed. He's not going to go around you. He is going to go through you. Nice return by that young man. Good field position again for the Warriors. Boy, they are out at officially the 35-yard line. They'll officially call it the 36-yard line. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's it's time for the Western Warriors. They're going to have Ooh. to change their game plan a little bit. They were hoping to keep it close to the cuff and keep that score down, but uh, they're going to have to open up the playbook right now, and they're going to have to entrust that their sophomore quarterback can make big plays. He's capable. Yeah, he certainly is. Doty with a nice catch. He's got a big gain on the play. He's up over midfield, stays on his feet. He's down inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Nice job by Parker Rivard downfield with a continued block. Central has to come from behind to make that catch. And it looks like uh, Jeffrey Twost, Trost is limping right now for Bay City Central. He's going to come out of the ball game. Adam Doty, nice hands right there, Jeff. He's a junior. Uh, Dad Garrett is on the coaching staff for the Bay City Central Warrior, uh, Bay City Western, Western Warriors. Yep. And Grandpa was a legend football coach here in the Bay City Bay still, County area. Still coaching, still coaching the JV team. Yep. Al Doty. First and 10. Hand off up the middle. Renewed vigor. Number 42. He's at the 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's into the end zone. It's a Western Warrior. Touchdown. Touchdown. What a play. Austin Schley up the middle. And he broke two tackles the first five yards. And I'll tell you what, he saw nothing but the green, green grass of home <laughs> as he scoots into the end zone to bring the Western Warriors a little momentum and inch their way back into this football nothing game. Nothing fancy right there, Jeff. That was just right off the uh, between the center and the guard. Austin had nothing but green, green grass of home, like you said. Big touchdown for the Western Warriors. Pass sets up the run yep. in this last sequence success for the western warriors and you go all right they're still going to be down 28 to whatever after this conversion for western to score two touchdowns in the first half of the football game is a huge positive for their offense yeah and they needed one really quick right here jeff the beginning of the uh, second quarter and they got that with 11:09. carter bachigalupo he's going to throw this thing wide and ball thrown just short parker rivard lost his footing trying to come back to the football the two-point conversion is no good. Timeout on the field now with 11.09 left in our first half. And our score, the Bay City Central Wolves 28 and the Western Warriors 12 back in a moment here on Bay County TV. Where did this rash come from? Hold on, let me see. Could be bed bugs. Oh. Mom, Grant, to the bed bugs. Let's see what the doctor says. Introducing Covenant Virtual Care. Real-time video doctor visits, e-prescriptions, and follow-up. Now extraordinary care comes to you. See, it's just poison ivy. It's more advanced. 
Learn more at covenantvirtualcare.com. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Dode and Mike Wasdala along with you as we see the Western Warrior faithful finally have something to get excited about. Mike Wasdala, that was a superb drive, big pass to Doty, and then finished off by the run by Austin Schley. Yeah, nice job by Doty catching that ball. Bocchalupo putting it where he wants. Western Warriors kicking off to the Bay City Central Wolves. And that ball is uh, touched, and Central's going to have to pick it up inside their own 10-yard line. And there's really nowhere to go. Trying to make moves to the outside. Back to about the 16-yard line is the return man for Bay City Central, Garrett Glish. Central's going to find themselves deep. See, that's the second kickoff. Western purposely will kick that ball line drive style, hoping it takes funny hops, and it's uh, worked pretty well. Well, that's what you get for watching a lot of oh, film. Late flag, and too, another coach. late flag. Yeah, late flag. Not sure who this is going to go against. They're going to have a confab about it. I tell you, there's a couple of mamas going to be upset. Those tight <laughs> sticks are need to going to come out on those yellow hankies to get the grass stains yeah, off. I tell you what, the boys have been very active tonight throwing the yellow <laughs> hankies out. They're trying to keep charge and control of this game, this huge rivalry game. Like you said, it was a block in the back, yep, Jeff. Against Bay City Central. So from the 17-yard line, they'll go half to the distance to the goal. They'll go down to the eight and a half. All right, they got to figure. They got to do their math. They got to get the abacus out. I think they'll go down to the eight and a half yard line, and that's where they're going to drop it. Oh, they're going to go down to the seven yard line. Nope, the eight and a half. The referee's right. I think they listen to us on Bay County TV. Oh yeah, they're they're tuned in. I, you know, I did my cipher, and, <laughs> and now we're going to have a dead ball foul. Okay. Go against the Western Warriors for 15 yards. I think they just wanted to give that umpire a little run out there tonight, Ooh, Jeff. I'll tell Work you what, out a little bit. Back eight and a half, forward 15. I'll <laughs> not, tell you, not. getting all the math. Carry the knot. <laughs> he's all set. As Jethro Bodine said, not, not, carry the knot. When it's all said and done, it'll be first and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves. 11-01 left in our first half of play. Brian Elder out of the shotgun. Twins to the near side and twins to the far side. He's got plenty of time to throw that ball. What a perfect toss out to the wide receiver. I believe that's Judson Morse as he just has got great hands, Mike. You know, Glish did a little 10 and out, Jeff. Then Morris came about 15 and in. And, and Elder just waited for him to clear that linebacker in between the linebacker and the DB, put it right on the money. Morris with a great catch and what a great throw. How about the time Elder had to throw yeah. that ball? How about the big fellas down there for the offensive lineman, Jeff, giving them that time? Another first and ten for the Bay City Central Wolves. Twins to both sides. Hand up, up the middle. And that looks like number 32, Unique Houston with another burst. Nope, they might 30. have another one. Number 30 now, Colin Van Dorn, son of swingman Steve <laughs> Van Dorn. He's a senior tonight, and he's getting an opportunity. He says, boy, thanks, big fellas up front. You left me a nice little hole to run through there. Runs like Dad used well, to. Well, Dad used to be called him swingman because Dad used to fly to the outside. They'd do that little toss sweep, and boy, that little guy would scoot around the corner and head down the sidelines to daylight. Oh, Here's our flashback to the Wildcat days. Elder back to pass right now. Here comes the pressure. That ball is still thrown complete for a first down at the moment. Trying to pick up extra yardage. That is Judson Morse again. He's down to the 35. How about the strength of Elder just as he was being hit to still put that ball on target? Tyler Chonick on the tackle. Jeff all the way down the field, but a nice block by number one, Devell Washington, to give uh, Hudson a couple more yards on the pass play. Coming out a little ginger, hanging that left arm down right now is Judson Morse. Let's keep an eye on that at the sideline as... Uh, that thing is looking a little limp right now. He he got one of those funny bone hits that's not funny, well, it looks like. Kelly bats off. The uh, trainer's taking a look at him. He'll be back in there. There's another good handoff. Vision. A good cut back across the green by Van Doren again as he picks up about four yards on the play. Nice cut back to daylight to pick up four. Well, good vision by the uh, running back, Jeff, for Bay City Central. Elder coming over to get the play from Coach Fraser. 
He well, likes then, it when he can come just five yards and talk to coach. <laughs> that's that's kind of like you keep it uh, in the golf and the the golf course is wet. You keep it close to the cart pass because you got to stay in the cart pass. Well, that's the strategy. That See, is I, the strategy. I, you know, I spray it all over the place. Yeah, so me too. That's my cost per stroke is down. <laughs> <laughs> Second down at six yards to go for Central. His elder out of the shotgun. Here comes a little pressure from Western. That ball downfield. It's just off the fingertips of the Bay City Central wide receiver on the play. That's number 24, Marcus Zavala, down there in the corner of the end zone, not too far from the student section, Jeff. Elder with a nice pass, put a little air under it, just a skosh long. Call it third down and six for Central. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, Zavala wants that oh, yeah. one back. He got his fingertips on it, could not haul it in, though. They got trips to the wide side of the field. That's a decoy. They want to go to Washington here on the near side, looking to see if they can get man coverage on him. Elder sees the defense right now. Here comes some pressure. Elder gets rid of that ball. Beautiful job of looking into the quarterback's eyes, seeing the passing lane. And that is a pickoff for the Western Warriors. Number 73 with that pickoff. Wade Witzko, he just had the sniffer going. Oh boy, good communication by the Western Warrior defensive line. They knew it was going to be a screen. They were yelling screen, and Witzko just found the running back, stepped right in front, and Elder threw it right to him. A big turnover for the Bay City Western Warriors and coming away with good field position. Boy, they drop one of their linemen back into coverage, and Elder looked right through that big boy. That's tough to do. He's a big drink of water. <laughs> Wade Wisco's a big fella. First and 10 for the Western Warriors. They'll run trips to the wide side of the field as they're going to try and do what they can do to uh, stretch out this defense. Bocicalupo back. He sets his feet, and he's going to throw that ball deep. Doty with a chance to catch the ball, and we're going to have a penalty flag. We've got dueling flags on the play. We may have offsetting penalties, and we may have to come back here to the line of scrimmage and replay the down. Yep, yeah, back at the 25-yard uh, line, Jeff, there's a flag, and back over on the other far sideline. That was pass interference. See what the other flag is. I think you're right. Offsetting penalties. Let's do it again. As they'll come back, holding on the offense, pass interference on the defense, penalties offset, replay the down. It'll be first and 10. They'll do it all over. I like the play call to Doty, though, do. and Doty, if he's not interfered with, has a great chance to make that catch. I like the play, Jeff. Big, that's what you do, you know, you just kind of open it up a little bit on first down. Most people think you're going to run it on first down, stay conservative. But Coach uh, Doty said, nope, I'm going to pass the football. Unfortunately, a big holding penalty. Carter Bacigalupo had time back there, set his feet, and really threw a nice football. Yeah, he did a nice job. Again, same formation. Boy, he double pumps right now. Now he's going to try and roll to the wide side. And that ball doesn't quite get to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to say they had somebody in the neighborhood, so there will be no penalty. Well, you know, that, and that's a good, smart play right there by, uh, by Carter, Jeff. Throwing the football away. He had some pressure. He had somebody in the area. Just get rid of it and live for another day. As they're going to run trips again to that wide side of the field. I don't know, something's down on the 15-yard line. Somebody might have a towel that came out. Parker Rivard. He does it all. <laughs> you know, he even picks up after himself. Oh, see well. if mom and dad see that and see that he can actually do that. Here's the uh, run for the Western Warriors. That is Pop. Or, excuse me, Slate number 42. As uh, Schley does a nice job of just getting some hard-earned yardage. In a more manageable third and six. Spencer Malthrop in on the tackle for the Wolves, Jeff. That young man's had a nice football game tonight. Like the way Schley runs, you're right. Third down and six, manageable for the Western Warriors. Coach Rawl, offensive coordinator for the Western Warriors, sending in a play with his sophomore quarterback, Carter Bocicalupo. Just under eight minutes left in the first quarter. 28-12, to 12, Bay City Central on top over Western. Glad you're along here on Week 9 on BCTV. Out of the shotgun on third and six. Little late pressure coming from Central. That pass is out in no man's land, and Bacigalupo felt the pressure coming up the inside and had to get rid of that football. Sent it out to a safe green pastures, but it's going to be a punting situation at fourth and six as the Central defense comes up big. Ballinger was out there, Jeff. Good protection, just a little bit high. Stops the clock, fourth down and long for the Warriors. They're going to punt it away to number 19, Glish. 
Garrett Glish for Bay City Central. Boy, and Glish, I'll tell you, he's not very deep right now. He's only thinking this it? is going to be a 20-yard kick. I don't think they're coming after it with everything. I just think that they don't really think that there's going to be a ton and uh, they're going to just let that thing roll, and uh, they're going to yell fire and get away from it as it rolls down to the 31-yard line. It's down by the Western Warriors, number 31, Jacob Lytle. At that point, it'll be first and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves with seven and a half left in our first half of play. As we continue on here, Bay City Central going into the offensive set. Did we just have company crews yeah, by? Well. <laughs> As they come up to the line of scrimmage, Elder again. That quarterback, he's got Washington to the near side with trips to the far side. As they go up to the line of scrimmage, Elder looks things over. He's going to roll to the wide side of the field. He's got time to throw the football. That is complete on the play. It looks like the completion is to the Zavala out there. Number 24, as he gets about nine yards, and uh, there's a little conversation going on over there in the western bench, too. Uh, there's a little well, bit of emotion. Talk, they're talking about what they're going to have at McDonald's after the game. I'm a I'm a quarter pounder guy. Large uh, fry, Diet Coke. Well. That's what they're talking about. Brother Nate Doan in town, we went for the uh, all-time favorite filet of fish. Oh. <laughs> Can't go wrong with the fish. With a coupon. Oh, yes, we had twofers. <laughs> That's the only way to go. <laughs> First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves as they uh, got 10 yards on that reception. Central again with trips to the near side of the field. Washington all by himself on that far side. As a unique Houston tries to get that ball. Great defensive penetration that time. Looked like they had big number 74 in on that play. 79. 79. Gavin Nagy, Jeff, the big fella. Great penetration from his defensive line position. Big loss for the Warriors, or for the Wolves. They lost six on that play, Jeff. Second down and 16 central from their own 35-yard line. You know, we've said it 100 times. Great penetration at the defensive line point of attack. Breaks the play down every single time. Well, in Western, if they can hold tough here yeah. in the first half, they get the ball to start the second half. So that'll be exciting. Elder back. He's got some time to throw the football out here in the flats. It's complete on the play. And it will be out of bounds situation. And oh, oh he reached for the hanky. Find it. He reached for the hanky and he said that hanky was nowhere to be found. <laughs> Gain on the play of about 10 yards. He went, they've got the bulb on the end of that thing and he reached for it. He said that the hanky's gone. I can't find it right now. <laughs> Third down and six yards to go for the Bay City Central Wolves. That's not a good feeling right now. He's looking back to his side judge, giving him a little smirk right now. He lost the hanky. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens. They're down at six. Again, Washington to the near side with the offset eye. And they are going to audibleize at the line of scrimmage and change the play. Elder up under center. Quick pitch to Unique, and Unique picks up the first down. And Pop is going to uh, throw him out of bounds. And Michek is saying, just go on back, fellas. We don't need any of this. Let it be. Western with a couple of plays that were very close on this near sideline to be in 15 yards. The situation the officials are in right now, Mike, is they've got a tough job to do because yeah. if they fail to make that call on these plays, it's only going to get rougher. Yeah, and you know what? you got to squelch it. Sometimes what you have to do is you got to call a timeout, bring the fellas over, and have a nice heart-to-heart uh, -heart with them, Jeff. First and 10, Bay City Central. Unique Houston, look at the explosion as he goes forward for a gain of another 12 down to the 35-yard line. Tacklers on the play, Brendan Bellinger having to come up from his safety position. Man, that kid's tough between the tackles. He absolutely wow. gets that burst of speed, and he goes from first to fourth gear in a hurry. Uh, he, he is tough outside and inside, Jeff. He's got a long stride to him, too, when he's running the football. Van Dorn back at the tailback. Wide receiver split to both sides. Quick pass on the outside. Judson Morris with a first down and more as he gets down to about the 20 yard line. Elder threw that ball over a defensive end for Western and it just missed tipping that ball away. 
But I'll tell you what, Elder's in a rhythm right now offensively and got these Wolves rolling down the field. And on the tackle, number 24, Brendan, Brent, Brendan Fader, the senior. Nice throw by Elder, Jeff. Big first down for the Wolves right at the 20-yard line. Again, they've got wide receivers split to both sides of the field. Van Dorn with a change of direction again. He's going to pick up about three yards on the play as he is down uh, officially to the 19-yard line. And again, further conversation. It looks like a Western Warrior might be down on the play. And we'll take a break and be back right after this on BCTV. Hi, my name is Tom Izzo, the men's basketball coach at MSU. The threat of school violence is something that affects everyone and needs to be taken seriously. Okay to say is a confidential way you can report anything that threatens your safety or the safety of others. If you see or hear something that doesn't seem right, submit a tip to Okay to Say. You can call, text, email, go online, or use the OK to Say app. You could be the one person who helps to prevent a tragedy. Back on BCTV, Jeff Toad and Mike Wisdell. If you can't make it to the game, have a bonfire across the street and watch the game from close by. Well, they were out there two weeks ago having a good time, Jeff, when the Bobcats were in town during homecoming. All right, we have just been told by the golden pen of the Bay City Times and MLive Lee Thompson that that last pass by Elder is unofficially putting him at the top over Jerry Gross wow. going back from the 1950s at 1,629 yards. Impressive. And he's still got another year. Impressive. Elder wants to add to that total, and that ball is tipped away by Pop and almost then completed as well. Elder had a lot of time back there to throw that football again. He double pumped it, Jeff, and he had plenty of time. He was looking for number 23 uh, for the base of, uh, Central Wolves, uh, Wesley Maltrop. Incomplete stops the clock. Third down and nine for the Wolves at the Western 20-yard line. Wesley Maltrop also in uh, Coach Brian Bishop's third hour oh. communications <laughs> class. Oh, well, how do you know that? Well, because Natalie's in there and they're best buds. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they love that class. Coach Bishop has a great communications class. They're going to maybe get into a little broadcasting somewhere along the line. As the defense for the Western Warriors shuts unique Hudson down after a modest gain on the play. Tacklers on that play were led by number 50, Richard Dawson, as it will be a fourth down. I think you're going to see a field goal here, Jeff. You are going to see a field goal attempt. That looks like it is going to be about a 35-yard uh, attempt. This young man, Welters, has got the foot for it, Jeff. He's in a good spot right in the middle. This one won't end up on the roof. <laughs> if it does, we better sign him tomorrow. Yes, indeed. The kick is up. It's plenty long. It's right down the pipes, and it's good. Nice catch. Time out on the field with 4 and 43 left in the first half. 31 to 12. Central over Western. You had the peepers on a good catch in the end man. zone. I Back down there in, in, in Dennis Rogowski's old neighborhood. <laughs> the hood down yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll keep it right here as the Bay City Central Wolves add three. What a weapon to have a field wow. goal kicker and an extra point kicker that is just auto and matic. Jeff, want to thank again uh, Village Towing, our friends out on 2377 Huron Road and 706 State Street in Bay City, Michigan. We believe in helping our community as many ways as possible. As a family-owned business, we make sure to take care of our customers like they were our neighbors. We are a member of the Michigan Towing Association and Rec Master Certified. We tow everything from semis and motorhomes to motorcycles and antique cars. Recovery is our specialty. Whatever your situation, we can help. Our towing service is 24 hours and completely dependable. If you need a tow, Give us a call today. Oh, Michelle Cooper, a gracious uh, owner out there. Moultrup, super toes of football, and that's going to go into the end zone and out the back line and all the way to the fence. It'll be first and 10 for the Western Warriors from the 20-yard line as they have just really put it on as Western scored the first six. The next 31 points unanswered came by Central, or the next 28 before we had a touchdown from Western and then this last field goal. Yeah, good crowd on hand tonight down there in the north end zone, Jeff. A lot of familiar faces from over the years still standing in the same spot. I can remember coming here as a young kid watching a lot of Central football games. Indeed, they, uh, they have a faithful group that love to be down there. 
Western out of the shotgun. Bocigalupo pump fakes, throws that thing out, and it's almost caught, almost intercepted, and then almost tipped to Parker Rivard, as that will be back in as an incomplete pass, second down and 10 for Western. Bocigalupo just overthrew the short receiver and just underthrew Parker Rivard. Out there on the coverage was uh, number 28, Jeffrey Trost. Jeff, he almost had that interception. A little bit high again for Bocigalupo. No gain on the play. Stops the clock. 4.38 to go in the first half. Bay City Central 31, Western Warriors 12. Again, twins to the near side and twins to the far side. Single back for Carter Bocigalupo, the sophomore signal caller for the Western Warriors. Handoff right up the middle and absolutely nowhere to go as the Bay City Central Wolves were just all over that football. The original hit was by number 70 of Bay City Central, Quinn Wilson, and Quinn just shut that play down. There was just nowhere to go. As uh, Mr. Vincent said with his famous saying, brought down by a pack of wolves, and uh, there was a lot of purple helmets over towards the football, Jeff. Well, and it looks like uh, Central's been able to shuffle some players defensively, too. Keep so fresh. they're going into their two deep right now, trying to stay fresh for the second half. Yep. Boy, taking their time here on this offensive set. Watch his back judge. His hand's got to be going up very soon with 10 seconds left. He just looked. He's up with 10. Western should have time to get this play off. Back to pass is Carter Bocicalupo. He throws that ball down. Look at Parker Rivard going up there with the glue on the fingertips and hauling in another big pass. Boy, that was high, but Parker wanted that in the worst way. And he comes down with another catch that will make it a first and 10 for the Western Warriors. Great job by Parker. Really nice job going up and getting the rock, Jeff. And Bocicalupo put it right where he wanted it to. And a big first down right there for the Bay City Western Warriors. We got 325 and counting to go here in the first half. As Rivard goes again to the wide side of the field, trips to the near side. Doty on the inside of the three. Keep your eye on him as well. Bacigalupo trying to run the football. He might get a couple of yards, and then he ran into a whole lot of purple. Leading the way was uh, Chesla. Jeff, number five for the Wolves, also in there, number 70, Quinn Wilson. Gain of about three on the play. We'll call it second down and seven for the Bay City Western Warriors. Two and 50 left in our first half of play. The Warriors still with some time and two timeouts left in the first half. They'll have second down and again about seven yards to go. Again, no real sense of urgency right now for them. And uh, they've still got to get about 66 yards of real estate to hit pay dirt. Again, they'll go with trips. Rivard again to the wide side of the field all by himself. Bocicalupo back to pass. Just missed Doty, who was opened on the cut. The pass just went over his backside shoulder. He couldn't reach back and get yep. it. Very well-designed play, but it goes for none. It'll be third down and seven yards to go once again for Western. Clock stopped with two and 23 left in our first half. Yeah, number 41 for the Warriors, Jeff. That's Bren Brendan uh, Bellinger. He uh, kind of cleared it out. Doty was wide open, and, and Bocicalupo just missed him. Third down and a long eight for the Warriors. Carter wanted that one back because that would have been a first down and more out to Doty. Now they've got twins to the wide side of the field and twins to the near side. They've got Doty and Rivard out there. They're going to throw that ball downfield, and it's underthrown, and it's right into the hands of the Bay City Central Wolves. And I'm going to wait for the number of the young man that picked that ball off as uh, emotions run high. I'm guessing that was going to be number four, uh, Pavlock. It was either four, Pavlock, or number 28, Jeff. I didn't actually see who... Uh, there was a lot of commotion going on over on the far sideline, so I didn't actually Might see Might have been Jeffrey it. Trost. Boy, I'll tell you what, though. Bocicalupo uh, did not make a good decision on that pass. There was only one person in the neighborhood, and that was Trost. Do we have a penalty flag at the end yeah, of the play? I think it was a dead ball penalty. It's going to be on sportsmanlike conduct, Jeff. I think against both teams. I'm not quite sure. Personal foul central. Oh, personal it's only going to go against Bay City Central. I thought they had. A, they were going to throw a double flag there, Jeff. As they come down, 
And they will move that ball all the way back to the 48-yard line. A huge change in real estate, but Central will have their hands on the ball with 2-16 and 16 left in our first half of play. First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves. Brian Elder brings that offense out, and boy, from 48 yards, you know he's in the area code from now on to the end zone. <laughs> well, don't forget that field goal kicker, too, the Wolves have, Jeff. He watch, just, watch he just got 135. Yeah, he can kick it from 50. There's no question. We've already seen that once this year. Washington here to the near side of the field. Elder back, and uh, Elder has a chance to run the ball. He throws that thing downfield just a little over. If Brian has to do that all over again, he had about 15 yards of real estate down the sidelines. Could have dipped out of bounds without getting a hit, but he was going for the home run. <laughs> Judson Morris, the attended receiver, Jeff, just a little bit high, stops the clock second down and 10 for the Wolves at the Western War at their own. Uh, at Warrior, excuse me, 48. As they've got it going right now with uh, about two minutes left in our first half of play. Elder gets the call from head coach Morley Frazier. 31 to 12, our score with two and 13 left in our first half of play. They're going to go trips here to the near side of the field. Washington all by himself up top. They move uh, Unique over to the short side. And he picks up the blitz. They throw this ball on the outside. It is intended for Zavala. Marcus Zavala can't get that hot high pass. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down in 10. They had to go to their first checkoff right there. Great pressure from the Western defense. Nice job by number 83, Jeff, putting pressure on Elder uh, Thane Deming, the junior defensive end for the Western Warriors. Excuse me, he's a, he came from the uh, defensive backfield. Yeah, on the he blitz. made it come on a blitz. A linebacker, yeah. Yep. And he Defense, definitely yep. had a free run to the yep. quarterback, and Elder did a nice job of getting rid of the ball. Third down and 10 yards to go. Again, trips to the near side with the president to the short side. Coming down the field, settling in. That pass overthrown to Morse, and we're going to have a penalty flag late as they're going to call a, a late hit or a defenseless on Van Driesch. I'm not so certain about that. You know, you got a kid going for the ball. He's trying to make the tackle. That ball goes up over the top. I would have left that hanky in my pocket. Yep, they're going to they're gonna talk about it. It's going to be against the Western Warriors. They're going to have a dead ball personal foul, and that will not make the Western coaching staff happy. I don't think that's a good flag right there. <laughs> Coach Rawls uh, taught, wants to talk to the referee, look for uh, some kind of an explanation, Jeff, which he's intended to. Well, he's entitled to it indeed, but uh, they're not going to give it to him. Right now the yep. headlinesman's going to come over and try and talk to him about it, but I'll tell you what, nothing he's going to say to Coach Rao is going to get to convince him that that was the right call on the field. First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves. New life on the drive after the 15-yard penalty. Pass on the outside, Judson Morse picks up 12 yards again as he gets past that first down marker and will move the sticks again with exactly two minutes left in our first half of play. Morse with good hands right there, Jeff. Elder put it to the outside, turned and ran, got 12, first down for the Bay City Central Wolves. We're right at two minutes to go here in the first half. Boy, an eternity for Bay City oh, Central man. from this spot on the field that they're at, 20 yards from pay dirt. Just at the edge of the red zone. Elder out of the shotgun again. Single offset back. And they give that ball up the middle to Unique Houston. And he is popped by Michek. Michek came on to blitz. And he sniffed that play out. And he stuffed Unique. And Central's going to take a timeout. They're second. They'll have one remaining. We'll take a break and be back right after this on Bay County TV. In 1916, Warren Miller chose Auto Owners Insurance for his new car. In 1947, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson in 1979. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. As we reflect on where we've been, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who put their trust in us, and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Welcome back on Bay County TV. Jeff Tone and Mike Wasdala along with you. Jared and Natalie Doan upstairs on the camera. 
and Nick Page producing and directing our program, getting a chance uh, to look at those folks over on the sidelines. A little food for thought for the halftime show. They're waiting for their turn. They're just picking it and grinning over there, waiting for their opportunity to make it happen at the half, Coach. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, 16 yards to go. It'll be a great halftime oh, show. Oh, I'll tell you, whenever these two bands oh, get man. together, it is fun. The pregame show was tremendous as well. A little Star Wars going on. <laughs> so now we go back to the activities. Brian Elder out of the shotgun. And they're oh. coming to the near side of the field. As Washington tries to turn the corner, and I'll tell you, very, very well sniffed out defensively by Van Dries as they did not allow Central to do anything. They might have lost two more yards on the play. It'll be third down and about 18 yards to go. Clock running with a buck 24 left. Right now, they're uh, pretty safely into that field goal area for uh, number nine for the Bay City Central Wolves, Walter. They look for get some more, though. As they've got it lined up, Elder looks to make sure his wide receivers are set. He's rolling to the wide side of the field. Throwing that ball down in the end zone, and it's overthrown and incomplete with a buck left on the clock. It'll bring up a fourth down play, and probably I think they're going to give Walter an opportunity Might to as well. Got a little bit of wind uh, with the Jeff, and here he comes, number nine for the Bay City Central Wolves. Going to try for a field goal. This one will be from about 45. 45 yard line? Yep. 45 yards? It's going to be, uh, they're going to put that thing down at uh, just at the 34. 34. So it's going to be officially a 44 yard field goal well within his range. Oh, absolutely. As he's been to quite a few camps and he is very, very well regarded through the state. The kick is up. It's plenty long. Oh! And it clangs off the post, and it goes okay. through. I didn't think it made it. How about that? Looked like Minnesota Fats down there with a little English on that one. <laughs> up the left, up right, and through. That <laughs> crossbar for an extra three. That had, I'll tell you, that would have been good Whoa. for 55. Man, it didn't have a lot of height on it, but it was screaming to hit that uh, upright, the left upright, went through. I didn't think it went through because the way it ended up in the end zone, Jeff, but the ref said it was good. 34 to 12, 55 takes to go here in the first half. Central with the lead. Wow. And the Western coaching staff says, how can that go through? and then come down and be back out in front on the field to play. And that's, that's what surprised us. But they've got the angle on that, not us. Right. They're sitting right underneath it looking up. Yeah, it's, it, hey, we're along. We're 50-plus yards away from that thing, Jeff. Yes, we're going to stay right here right now, and they give an explanation from the referee. Referee just got the word from the two people back there to look at it. And uh, Coach Jeff Rouse says, boy, I just – find it hard to believe it can hit that upright and where it landed that it could have gone by that crossbar. And he's not going to win the argument right now, but he's just saying, boy, it's a, it's tough. And uh, hang on here. Uh, they, they're getting ready. Walter's getting ready to kick this ball <laughs> well, he's fired up. The old white hat hasn't been back to say we're ready to rock here yet. <laughs> here we go. Walter set to kick off. High deep in kick, and that is going to take an English roll at the five and going to have to be returned by the Western Warriors, and they're going to be pinned deep in their own end. Break a couple of tackles, get up over the 15 to about the 18-yard line. Pretty nice return from what they started with. Tacklers for Bay City Central were led on a play by Trey Trevino. Good special teams play tonight, Jeff, by both squads. Trevino with the tackle, 47 ticks to go here in the first half, 34 to 12. The Central Wolves over the Bay City Western Warriors. And again, if you're gonna make something happen, yep. I think big number 10's gotta be your target. They run twins to the far side of the field, Rivard to that far side. Doty's also been able to make something happen. Playing it a little bit close to the vest. Wow, nice a, run. Nice run that time by number 42, Schley. And I'll Ooh. tell you what, he runs hard. He does run hard, Jeff. That, that kid's a good football player. Watched him twice this year. Like the way he plays the game. 
And uh, there's no sense of urgency here deep in their own end. They don't want to make a mistake and give Central any more points. Already 34-12. to 12. This, by all intents and purposes, could be the last play of the first half. They're going to hand off right up the middle. The first down and more for Schley as he bangs out to the 36-yard line. Man. That's going to stop the clock with nine ticks left in our first half. I believe Western's going to take their last time out. They're going to take a time out, and we'll be back in just a moment here on Bay County TV. Over the years, he's put his heart into being your dad. He was always there to fix things. Now that he needs help, don't lose hope. Covenant Center for the Heart is leading the way in minimally invasive heart options for inoperable or high-risk patients. With the first and most comprehensive structural heart disease program in the Great Lakes Bay region, it's extraordinary heart care, close to home. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Tone and Mike Wasdala along with you. Western Warrior Band over there just itching for their turn to get out and make stuff happen. This halftime show should be something oh, to see. It's going to be very special, Jeff. Great pregame show, halftime show. Don't know how you do it any better, but I'm sure they're going to try. The pregame festivities were Lots. about 100 and uh, 30 and 150, so you got about 280 of band's members out there, and uh, that was just fun. Doty, the quarterback, and he's going to throw that ball downfield to Parker Rivard. It's just a little bit overthrown, and with three seconds left, uh, if he would have caught that ball, they tried to hit him on the sideline so that he could catch it and get out of bounds. Doty uh, really put some air under that football. Yeah, Doty's got a nice arm, and uh, Jeff, he's a junior, so... Uh, he went for the big fella, Parker Rivard, in your scouting report. That was the key player for Bay City Western tonight against the Wolves. As right now, you know, it's uh, right now pretty much what I think you do is about a 15-yard hook and ladder. You catch the ball, try <laughs> pitch it, and hope that you can get somebody with speed that's going to get you downfield and make it happen. You think they still call it the hook and ladder? Oh, yeah. Huh? That's I think old so. school. Well, they might have a newfangled name, but that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Doty again back out of the shotgun. They're going to try a wheel pattern down the field. And the pass is caught. And it's knocked out of bounds. And that's the end of our first half of play in our score. The Bay City Central Wolves 34 and the Western Warriors 12. We'll take a quick break and be back with the band shows of both schools right after this on Bay County TV. You're up. There's an old saying, you can never have too many officials. The age of the average official is 52 and getting older all the time. We're constantly recruiting new people, younger people to join us. After you register with the MHSAA, look on the website to find an officials association near you. They'll put you in a position to succeed as an official. We all learned a lot from high school sports and officiating is a great way to give back to the game. There's help wanted, just whistle.
And now in his own Michigan Taurus continuous marching band and leads us tonight with music from the Rock Opera Town. Replete with bloodline feature and a large step to the base in Central Oak Department. And Howard McClain to the guard Gantry Pinball Counter. Here is Pinball Wizard. the half the plum harris insurance sponsored halftime show here on bay county tv jeff tone and mike was along with you western scores first but then central had a big answer well i'll tell you what jeff this western went into the end zone but right after that it was all bay city central some nice special teams some good defense an interception a fumble recovery couple field goals long field goals for welters we got ourselves a uh, 34 to 12 football game here at halftime with the central wolves up Oh, by the way, an extra point on the roof, too. <laughs> and, oh, and an extra point on the roof. It's always the goal is to kick that thing up on the roof. So they'll get that down with that secret entranceway up there on the gym roof. Also another record that's stood here at Central since 1957. Jerry Gross lost his uh, passing yeah. mark tonight to Brian Elder for a mark to last that long. When you look back at, you know, uh, some of the great quarterbacks like Hayhurst and Maciejewski and, and others that have preceded here. 
That's a pretty tall feat, and well, he's only a junior. Yeah, he's only a junior. He's going to come back for more next year, Jeff. You go back into the 70s, you had guys like Pedersen were throwing the football around for the Central Wolves. But congratulations to Brian. What a great uh, feat. And, you know, Jerry Gross is in the audience tonight. He's here watching the game, and I'm sure Jerry is uh, very happy for that young man right now. Yes, indeed. You know, for something to last that long in honor – to stand for that long here at Central, that is pretty tall order. Now, for the Bay City Central Wolves, they just have to maintain. Western gets the ball to start the second half, and they have got to come out strong and make things happen. Yeah, they got to put something up on the board here early in the third quarter, Jeff, down 34-12 to 12 and get back in this football game. They've done some nice things, but, you know, the Central defense has had a lot to say about it. They're getting a lot of hats for the football, and their uh, pass defense is pretty good also. Carter Bocciclupo is getting some valuable experience right now, but finding the tough, going tough, and uh, they bring Doty in for a couple of series. I think they just want to bring Bocciclupo over and slow the game down a little bit. He looks to be their quarterback of the future. Well, Carter's, you know, just throwing the ball a little bit high. The guys are wide open. It's just a little bit high. He kind of calms down a little bit and starts throwing that football on more on a rope than on a lo on a lob. He's going to be okay and we'll be good. They're going to put another three minutes on the clock here as the teams are out and doing their <laughs> stretching right now. You've done this before, oh, yeah. haven't we've, you? We've done around this one more time. They just put the three and the referee says, let's get this rolling. This was a long first half. <laughs> also got a little chippy late in the first half. Yeah, well, the kids are playing hard, Jeff. You know, it's a rivalry, and uh, these kids really go at each other, and they both got a lot to prove. It's bragging rights. You uh, get the fireman's trumpet, and you've got 365 days to say, hey, we won the Central Western football game. Well, and again, Central in the second half has got to finish strong because they need all the points that they can get to be in hope on Selection Sunday on Sunday night that they're going to have an opportunity to go to week number 10. Well, the word is if they win tonight, Jeff, the uh, when you look at all the points, and we've been looking at it uh, for the last couple of days, they have a chance to make the playoffs and go down and play the Linden Tigers. So that'll be the uh, top team in that division, in that region. So, you know, uh, it's just funny how things can shake out. And uh, we're all going to be uh, up Sunday, 7 o'clock, watching that selection show. It'll be a lot of fun. Oh, it will be a lot of fun. So as the players get out on the field and stretch, we'll take a quick break and be back for the second half right after this Plum Harris Insurance-sponsored halftime show on BCTV. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Stop by our office at 706 South Euclid or give us a call to see how we can help with your home, life, auto, and business insurance needs. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Doan and Mike Guzdala along with you. Central set to kick it off. Welter with a high deep end over end kick. It will be taken on the seven yard line by the Western Warriors as they cruise up the field. Couple of good blocks, we're gonna have a holding penalty. Uh, they got away with one. And then Central may have gotten away with a late hit. Nope, they didn't get away with a late hit. They got that one late, but I'll tell you, Western got away with a hold at about the 27 where that jersey was stretched all the way to the Central sideline. Yeah. yeah, it was right down here in front of us, Jeff, but a late flag, gonna have a late hit out of bounds. Coach uh, Morley Frazier is uh, talking to the line judge over here on the near side of the field. And we'll see what he's going to call. And now they've got to make sure that they've got their flags down in the right spot. Personal foul against Bay City Central. So they're going to move that ball from the 33-yard line all the way out to the 48-yard line. At that point, it'll be another great starting field position and first and 10 for the Western Warriors. Yeah, again, uh, a big penalty to start the second half. Jeff, they're going to take that ball all the way out to the Western Warrior 47-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Western coming away again with great field position to start the second half. Mike, I saw something new just happen out there. The referee I marched that. off the yardage, put the ball down, and then spotted it 
outside the hash for the umpire to put down. That is a new I, one. I've on never me. seen that one before either. That must be a new technique that they're using for the 19th season and just trying out as that pass is complete down the field. And who makes the catch? Parker Rivard. Parker Rivard for another nine yard reception. I'm trying to think, is that number five or number six tonight for Parker Rivard? And on the tackle for the Central Wolves is number 28, uh, Trost. What a nice pickup on first down for the Western Warriors in the Central Territory. Second down and one for Western at the 44-yard line of Bay City Central. Love it when they use the pass to set up the yep, run. Yep. Good way to come out and start the second half for Coach Rawl and the squad. And they've got Doty at quarterback. He's out of the shotgun. He's coming to the near side. He's going to try and run the ball, and uh, he isn't even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He is going to get smothered for a loss on the play. That loss is going to be four yards on the play, so I think they're going to decline the penalty, Mike, and you yeah. third and 15. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Jeff. I don't know. We'll find out right now. I think they're, Marley Frazier says send them back from the spot of the foul. You know, we're going to have ourselves a 10-yard penalty, looks like, from around midfield. So I think they're going to uh, block in the back, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, hold or block in the back. Either way, you're going to have 10 yards. They're going to have it from the 48. So they didn't uh, quite get the flag at the spot of the foul. But I'll tell you, Central says I'm going to push them way back. Man. Instead of a third down in about six, they're going to go back to. Of course, I missed my mark there. I, I realized they were a little closer to the first down. My abacus said 15 when it would have been third and five, and they said, we'll take second and 15. Well, and it happened right here in front of us, Jeff, and another tough break for the Western Warriors. Second down, excuse me, yeah, second down and 15 for the Western Warriors. Boy, when you make mistakes like that, you have got to be able to work through them. Doty going to the wide side of the field. Pass is complete. First down and more down that far sidelines. As Bellinger makes the nice grab. And uh, Brandon Bellinger with a nice run after the catch for a first down and more. He's looking a little bit gimpy as he comes back into the huddle, though. Well, Bellinger ran a nice route right there, Jeff. And Doty just a little sprint pass out to the left, put it right on the money. And, you know, when Bellinger and Schley get the football, they're going north and south. They're not going to try to run around you. They're going to try to run over you. Well, they don't have breakneck speed, but they also know how to finish. Yep. And so that's what they do, what they do best. Motion to the near side of the field. Handoff for a modest gain on the play. Austin Schley might have got a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. We've played the first two minutes of our third quarter as Bay City Central continues to have a 34 to 12 lead over the Western Warriors. Good tackle by number 81, Cameron Monville, Jeff, on by the Bay City Central Wolves. Pick up of one for Western, second down and nine for the Warriors in Central Territory. Boy, Parker Rivard loves it at the end of the play. He just stays right yeah. there, gets the call from coach, doesn't have to run all the way back to the huddle. <laughs> Those receivers on that gig. side of the field got a nice gig going. Yeah, you got pretty, it. pretty nice. Second down, nine yards to go. Doty again has started the third quarter as the quarterback. Here comes the central pressure. That ball is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver on the play for Western, and that was Josh Duba, the senior. Boy, he wishes he had that over again. Doty put that one right on the mark. Marcus Facundo, number 26, Jeff. He just missed that interception. If he would have caught that, it was nothing but the green, green grass of home down in that north end zone. There was nobody around him. He would have certainly had oh. a good a running Ooh. head start Boy. towards that end zone indeed. Third down and nine yards to go. As the Western Warriors have come out realizing that they've got to loosen this central defense up through the air a little bit. Doty back to pass. He's going to throw that thing downfield, and it looks like it's going to be complete. Parker Rivard has it. They've got dual possession of the ball, but Parker says that it's always dual possession. Mike goes to the offense. Yes, it does. Parker gonna, came back for that ball beautiful. That looks like it's going to be close to a first down, Jeff. I think they're going to measure this one. He's got it. I, bet, I think he's going to get it by half the football. We'll see. We'll, uh, we'll get the camera right on that, Jeff. We'll zoom right in on that if we could. Oh, yes. 
we got ourselves a new director and producer. As they're going to stretch that thing out, let's go to where the ball is at. There's the five-yard mark. Let's move a little farther and catch that stretching. Ooh, they are going to say that it's a couple of your wife's credit cards with short of a first down, Mike. <laughs> Ooh, we. <laughs> So it'll be fourth down and uh, about a wee nab. <laughs> well, we we is a, a we wee. is being kind. I think it's a scouse more that than a wee. Is, that is definitely the width of a couple of credit cards <laughs> short of a first well, down. A stack maybe. <laughs> Here we go with a big fourth down play. No doubt that Western's going to go for oh, this. No, yes, absolutely. Chains are reset right now. Referee's going to blow the ready for play. Doty looking things over right now. And I think the Western Warriors are going to call a timeout. Really didn't like the defense Central had in. We'll take a quick break and be back after this on Bay County TV. How's married life? Are you ready to have a baby? Baby, baby. How about that baby? Ooh. I'm not getting any younger. When you are ready, with the only neonatal intensive care unit in the Great Lakes Bay region, Covenant is the safest place for your delivery. Go to mycovenantbaby.com. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Toad and Mike Wasdala along with you, greatamericanrivalry.com. This is a great American rivalry, well, Mike. Well, Jeff, I was talking to Nick Page, the producer. He says this is one of the top games uh, in the country uh, tonight, tonight, so it's a... Uh, Put on by the Marine Corps. Ah, Carter Bocigalupo comes in on that fourth down play. Uses his strength and vision to find just enough of a crease to get the first down and a couple of more. It'll be first and 10 for the Western Warriors as their drive continues here. Pretty looking drive to start the third quarter. Yeah, it really has been a nice looking drive, uh, Jeff. Doty has come in and done some nice uh, things from that quarterback position. And Bocigalupo did a nice job there getting that first down. 8.40 and counting to go in the third quarter. 34 to 12 Wolves over the Warriors. We'll find out if Carter, yep, Carter Bocigalupo continues on. So Coach Rao is using a two-quarterback system, and it has worked good thus far in the third. Handoff right up the middle to Pop. Pop picks up about three yards as he gets down just inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Central tacklers were led by Pollack as uh, he has been all over the field tonight. Yeah, the young man's had a nice game tonight, Jeff, for the Bay City Central Wolves. But eight minutes to go here. A nice little drive, taking some time off the clock, keeping the ball away from that high-octane Bay City Central offense. That's exactly what Coach Rao tried to uh, institute in the first half. We talked to him before the game started tonight, and he said, you know, I've got to be balanced offensively and need to move the football and keep that central team off the field in third quarter. It yeah, started off perfectly. you got to keep that speed and Brian Elder off the field to be effective against the Wolves, Jeff. Second down and eight. Doty downfield and he throws it right into the hands of a central defender. He tried to put that ball into too tight a zone. I think it slipped. It looked like it slipped out of his hand. To me, it looked like it slipped, Jeff. I don't think he was uh, he was trying to throw it there. It looked like it slipped to me. Maybe I just missed something. Opportunistic defense for Bay yeah, City Central with another turnover. They've had a nice uh, turnover ratio tonight on defense, Jeff. But a big turnover for Western. Took a lot of time off the clock. 7.30 to go in the third quarter, and they, and they turn it over. Tough break for Western. Indeed, Central will come back. And I think that we're going to have a Western timeout. We're going to take another break and be back right after this on BCTV. Sports give so many opportunities to kids. It gives them an opportunity to see where they fit within a team, persevere, understanding how to work with different personalities. Those are the lessons that will make you a successful adult. As a mom, you have to have an understanding of what concussions are. Concussions are things that are treatable. If we take care of athletes, they will be able to develop and have a long, happy, healthy life. 
Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Doan and Mike Wasdala along with you. Nick Page upstairs with Jared Doan, Natalie Doan doing a little producing and directing under the direct supervision of Nate Doan and Matt Place tonight here just inside the third quarter. <laughs> Bay City Central on offense, right up the middle. Houston gets a couple of yards and he gets popped by Pop. Nice job by uh, Pop on the tackle, Jeff. We uh, saw him against Saginaw High Trojans. He had a nice football game, doing a nice job tonight. And a big opportunity right here for the Bay City Central Wolves, Jeff, to get a drive, take some time off the clock, eat that time, keep it away from the Western offense. Boy, Western's hoping to get a three and out and get their hands back out of football as they had some momentum offensively going. Elder back to pass. He air mails the ball over Morse's head. I think that ball might have been tipped. I think it might have been tipped, Jeff, also by one of the Western Warriors. And again, you know, if you can't get to the quarterback when he's going back to pass, you got to put your arm up. And I think that pass was just a little bit deflected. Not by much. I think on third down here, they're going to design a play to go to the president. <laughs> Is that Mr. Washington? <laughs> Mr. Washington, our first president, not Sir Donald. <laughs> He's been a little bit quiet right now, and I think they're saving him for a special play, and this could very well be it right now as they will run the tight end to the near side of the field here on the short side with Washington. He's offset from the line of scrimmage. Elder's got people in his face. He's throwing that ball down. Judson Moores gets the pass completed at the 28-yard line with two Western Warriors in his face. Elder throws a strike about 40 yards in the air. Oh, that's a strong kid, Jeff. When you can throw the ball like that on the money with people hanging all over you like that. And again, Washington's just running right down the field and they're favoring his side with the safety. And so Judson Morris has had a great football game tonight catching the ball we got officials time out right now and I think what they're going to do is I think they may have just given a sideline warning over to Western I really don't know what the referee was making right. a motion over there to the Western bench nonetheless it'll be another first and ten for the Bay City Central Wolves there's Houston look at the feet as he uses to just bide his time till he finds a little crease and whoop, right through the hole he goes. You know, Jeff, he's got great feet. That's hard to do with a jitterbug like that. Hang on to the football, find a hole. Good blocking at the point of attack. Offensive linemen for the Central Wolves tonight have done a fantastic job. Blocking for the running back, protecting the quarterback. As Elder continues to have this central drive in motion right now, the offensive line has done a phenomenal job tonight to give the running backs holes and give Elder time to throw the football. Up under center he gives. Offset eye backfield formation once again. There's a shot to the outside and Unique Houston has got the first down and more. He has just got a beautiful burst of speed. And I think he uh, learned something watching uh, DeQuez. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He certainly showed him how to make that happen. Yeah, it's quite a mentor if you can get uh, DeQuez uh, to watch DeQuez, Jeff. But, you know, when he gets the ball from that uh, tailback position, he's got good vision and good blocking again at the point of attack. Washington to the near side. Judson Morse to the wide side of the field. First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves. Look at that hole for Houston. He cuts back across the grain. Zips to the outside. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's into the end zone. It's a Bay City Central Wolf touchdown. Boy, what a great vision. Back across the grain to the open field. One last move on the defender and into the end zone. You knew he was going to that northeast corner, Jeff. We saw it perfectly on the angle from up here in the press box. You knew he was going to cut it outside with that speed. There's no way anybody was going to catch him. Woo. I'll tell you what, it'll be nice to look at his yardage. He's got to be over 100 yards tonight offensively. We'll look to the golden pen. Oh, we're at 90. I knew we were close. He is not just another pretty oh, face no. down here. He's, He's doing it all. That, that abacus is smoking. The extra point is uh, up. Uh, uh, this one oh. is shy of the roof, but it's nonetheless good. Time out of the field with 5 and 24 left in the third. It is 41 to 12. Bay City Central on top. We'll take a break and be back in just a minute here on BCTV. Oh, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Ben, please. Wow, you can talk to your app? That's pretty cool. Not an app, it's my agent. 
in this moment. No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto Owner's Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Back here on Bay County TV, Jeff Toad and Mike Wasdala along with you, the wolf at the 50-yard line, the artistic work and the creativity of Michael White. Assistant coach Michael White and custodial engineer extraordinaire. Oh, and he's got a son that's a freshman oh, yeah. as part of that big win Wednesday night for Central. As Walter has a big, long kickoff, and that is taken back, and we'll go into the end zone. Anytime that ball goes into the end zone, it's an automatic touchback, and we'll come out to the 20-yard line. Uh, that central weapon again gets Western deep in their own end. Time for them to see if they can go 80 and finish a drive. Jeff, want to thank a couple more people. Want to thank out of Bay City Western, Mike Thayer, the athletic director, Judy Cox, the uh, yeah, principal, and the Western Booster Club. Also want to thank the Central Booster Club, Mr. Tim Marciniak, principal here, athletic director, Jen Thunberg, Dr. Stephen Bigelow, the new superintendent here at the Bay City Public Schools, for all their support this football season and during our all of our fall sports seasons. And hats off to a great crowd, too. Yeah. Somewhat late arriving. We were yep. wondering where people were, but they've they really filled the stadium in. And uh, they've been treated to offense from Central Western's moved the ball, haven't been able to finish in the end zone. Let's see if this drive is different. Doty back to pass. He's going to throw that ball into double coverage, and the ball is tipped away. And it'll go back to the line of scrimmage. Great defense that time by Bay City Central as the tag team duo of Wesley Maltrip and Jaden Pavlock with the big defense. Oh, I'll tell you, Maltrip, Maltrip and Pavlock have had a good football game tonight. The law firm. The law firm. <laughs> <laughs> they are playing some great defense again. Doty has to be careful when you throw that ball into double coverage that that ball doesn't get tipped and picked. Well, they just tried to find a little open space on the field, Jeff, right there in the gap, and it was right there, but good defense by Malthrop, second and ten for the Warriors. As they come up to the line of scrimmage again, Doty says, hold your position. I've got trips to that side of the field. On the outside, Parker Rivard with another grab, and he gets out of bounds as he's up to the 34-yard line. And that is the most that I've seen them use this young man all year long, and you can see why I'm happy that he's getting his hands on the ball. He can make it happen. Well, he's a big target, Jeff. When you're six foot seven, you got a wingspan like that. Throw it up, let the young man go get it. He's had a nice game tonight. He's had a nice year, Jeff, uh, for the Western Warriors. He scored their first touchdown of the season, and uh, he's got two touchdown grabs on the year. He's looking to finish this season with at least one more. Well, we're looking forward to seeing him uh, in the basketball season also. I've uh, watched him mature. I was out there when he was a freshman when I was out coaching. So uh, he has gotten bigger and stronger. Fun to watch. He certainly has got great hands, too, and that is essential at the wide receiver position. Doty now to the wide side. He throws that thing out on a little flare. Nice little yards after the catch. Looks like a central player is down. He's going to get up a little bit slow. But that is Meechek. He's going to move the sticks out to the 45-yard line. Another first and 10 Western. Little success through the air. Yeah, nice job by Doty just rolling out there. A little sprint pass left. Good route by uh, Meechek to pick up the first down. First and 10 for the Warriors at their own 45-yard line. Again, as we've said a few other times tonight, Mike Western has shown the ability to move they the have. football. They've just made mistakes. Yeah, they just can't put it in the end zone, can't finish right there. Twins to the place. near side and twins to the far side. Now they're coming trips here to the middle, and they try and go right up the middle, and I want to tell you what, filling the hole for Bay City Central. Unbelievable job was number 81, I believe, with that first hit and that is Cameron Monville. He stepped up from his linebacker spot, saw that play happen, and shut it down. Well, nice job. I'm, I'm down uh, looking at defensive coordinator right in front of us, uh, Jeff, uh, Ben Tomke, the defensive coordinator for the Bay City Central Wolves. He's had a nice game plan tonight. Wolves have done a nice job defensively. Ben Tomke, one of the good guys yep. in the business. He really helped to uh, rebuild that pin conning program. Had the opportunity to come back under the tutelage of Morley Frazier and couldn't pass that opportunity up. 
has a back to pass. They're going down the field and just overthrowing Michek, who had a step on the defense. And oh boy, does Doty want that one back. That one would have been six if they could have connected. Well, nice job by uh, number 77 for the Wolves, Jeff. That's uh, Ethan Dusso. He had a line on uh, Doty, put a little pressure on him. Doty got rid of the ball and he kind of held back and didn't hit him. And a nice job of holding back and not getting that unnecessary penalty for the late hit. So hats off to him. Third down and 10 yards to go. Still three and 17 left in our third quarter of play. Look at him down there in that north end zone, too. They're still packed four and five <laughs> deep down there. Some people think that's the best vantage point to watch they, the game. They've been there a long time. Parker Rivard here to the near side of the field. Coming downfield, and they're going to throw that ball short. And that ball is incomplete. Ran the two wide receivers kind of on some fly patterns, trying to clear it out underneath to a Carter Bocicalupo, and that pass was incomplete. Now it'll be fourth down and 10, and from your own 45, even though the score is what it is, you almost yeah. have to punt the ball. Western will punt it away, going back for the Bay City Central Wolves in his very familiar position, number 19, Garrett Glish. And he backs up now uh, about five yards farther than normal, so let's see if they get an Australian-style kick here. Is what, Central doesn't put great pressure on. And there's the boot. Glish is going to pick the ball up and try and get to the outside. He's not able to turn the corner as he gets pulled down at the 28-yard line. Nice job by Witzkel. As uh, Wade Witzkel's had just a nice year for the Western Warriors. We've mentioned his name a lot. He and Pop are two of the great leaders on that defense yeah, this year. They've uh, had a, uh, Both of them had good football games tonight for the Western Warriors. Jeff played very well. Played very well all year. There's a good look at the fun that the Western Band is having over there on the far sidelines. They're about as far away from their student section as they could be. Just no room down there next to the student section. Well, they certainly have fun wherever they go, and they're a very talented very good band. band. Very good. Out of the shotgun. Brian Elder again with trips to the wide side. Washington all by himself to the near side. They're going to throw that ball downfield and just overthrowing the intended wide receiver. And Elder says, oh, why didn't I try and put just a little bit of touch on that ball? Well, Brian Elder is going to look at BC TV come 7.30 tomorrow, Jeff, on Saturday. He's going to say, oh, baby, just a skosh more lob on that. A little more air, and that would have been six. That was certainly a good look and play, and I believe that was Judson Morse yes, out there was. on that fly. Yeah, Judson's uh, his favorite receiver tonight, Jeff. Well, he's got great hands. There's no reason why he wouldn't be a favorite. As they're now in a run situation here. Nice job as Van Dorn picks up some yardage to about the 33-yard line before he's brought down by the Western Warriors. Amongst others, big number 979, Gavin Nagy getting out there. Also, Taylor Pop again on the tackle. Jeff briskly played third quarter. We got 235 and counting to go. Central 41, the Warriors 12. Young Mr. Michek is another player that I've been keeping yeah. my eye on and uh, he's done some very nice things on both sides of the football yeah, tonight. Yeah, he is a he's a good looking player. As Elder under center, they're going to try that run play again. Look at the protection of the football that time as Van Dorn just absolutely engulfed that ball against his body. Picks up the first down and more. He'll be out to the 44 yard line. At that point, it's another first and ten for the Bay City Central Wolves. And boy, I'll tell you what, that, that offensive line had a great Ooh. kick out block and allowed Van Dorn to move upfield. I think that was number 78, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff. That was Dylan Jones with a big block. Wow, that was impressive. First and 10 once again, offset eye. Just taking their time. Van Dorn says, I'm gonna do what I can to hold on to it. Michek comes up and hits him at the point of attack. And look who else is getting out there, the big guy Nagy. He's really moving from the inside to the outside. And uh, you don't want somebody like that to finish on you. Ooh, I, uh, he's a big fella. He's a big drink of water. <laughs> what do you about, think about that uh, grocery bill for that young man and his family? He certainly uh, 
Has he's, great feet for a no, big fella, though. he does. He's quick. He's very quick. As uh, Elder is going to take his time now with a buck 12 left in the third quarter. Now it says, yep, you're going to back up. He surveyed the situation. Second down and 12. Van Dorn comes upfield, makes one man miss, gets out to the 50-yard line for a gain on the play of about seven yards. Very, very nicely done by son of swing man Van Dorn. <laughs> we got another Western player down. Trying to look to see who that could be. Process of elimination. I can't see who that might be down. We're going to take a quick break, though, with 52 ticks left to the third and be back right after this on Bay County TV. All right, this is Adam. Take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> the best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Back here on BCTV, Jeff Dodd and Mike Guzdala, Dawson Richard being helped off the field. And I'll tell you, uh, you look at the number of bodies down today, this has been a physical, hard-hitting football game. It absolutely has, Jeff. A typical rivalry game between these two schools. And you know what? Valley contest. Hard-hitting, good football players. Nice job. Central with a third and four right now. Probably... A running situation with this uh, juncture of the football game. Trying to make it happen. Van Dorn with uh, some nice running yards yep. here in the th late third quarter. He's had a good game tonight, too, for the Wolves. That's a nice, pleasant surprise coming off the bench. Van Dorn Whoa. again comes up. He's got the first down and more and grabbed by the collar. Everybody's going to yell for it. Everybody's going to yell for it. But, gentlemen... If you know what horse collar is, you got to grab him by the collar and pull him backwards. Did he fall backwards? There's no horse collar there. You learned something new tonight, gentlemen. First and 10 Bay City Central. Uh, Mr. Dones had a teaching moment with a, uh, Thought we'd the use, younger generation. Use a little refing up here. 101 for the youngsters. And I like their vision. They said, hey, ooh, I saw that collar go pulling back. That could be horse collar. No, but next what? time it happens, say no. Mr. Doan said they got to pull them backwards before they're going to throw We're that. Not flag. so fast, my friend. <laughs> First to ten. Van Dorn again. He bangs forward for a gain on the play of about four yards. The offensive line for Bay City Central is yeah, just sled off. blocking and just getting off the ball right now. And that will do it for the end of our third quarter of play with our score, the Bay City Central Wolves 41, the Western Warriors 12. Back in a minute with a final 12 of week number nine here on Bay County TV. Over the years, he's put his heart into being your dad. He was always there to fix things. Now that he needs help, don't lose hope. Covenant Center for the Heart is leading the way in minimally invasive heart options for inoperable or high-risk patients. With the first and most comprehensive structural heart disease program in the Great Lakes Bay region. It's extraordinary heart care, close to home. Back here on BCTV, the best looking sign in the place, coach. <laughs> That's a good looking sign. Boy, and look at the people that are fortunate enough to be around that sign. They're getting a little prime time right now. <laughs> Second down, six yards to go for Central. Start of the fourth quarter. Central's going to take a timeout. And Short. They were, uh, they were missing a running back here to start the fourth quarter. And Morley looked out there and said, wait a minute. We only count to 10. We need 11 to make it happen. So <laughs> we'll keep it right here as they'll do an abbreviated 60 here, I have a feeling as Morley Frazier is going to talk to his troops on second down and six. How about our friends from Village Towing? Absolutely, Jeff. Uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Village Towing, two locations, 2377 Huron Road and 706 State Street in beautiful Bay City, Michigan. We tow everything from semis and motorhomes to motorcycles and antique cars. Recovery is our specialty. Whatever your situation, we can help. Our towing service is 24 hours and completely dependable. If you need a tow, give us a call today. Shirts, mugs, and more. Another one of our great apparel sponsors here on Bay County TV. Second down and six. Elder with a pass to the outside. It's complete. 
Nice job of planting the feet and pushing forward for the first down. Another catch for the central wide receiving core. I think that is Jacob Morse. Yes, it is. Number 21, the sophomore Jeff up on the varsity for the big game. I'm going to tell you what. Elder throws a pretty catchable ball. Yeah, he does. He does. It's got a tight spiral. He's got a little, little uh, zip on it. And the receivers like that, Jeff. New quarterback. New quarterback for the Wolves is Judson Morris, Jeff, number 13. As he gets upfield down to the 20-yard line, that looks like Van Dorn running the ball again as uh, they pulled Elder out of the ball game for yep. the night. And that was Morse to Morse then on that last connection. That was Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Gain of about five on the play. Nice, though, to get another yeah, quarterback absolutely. sometime. You never know if you're going to need him. And Central certainly playing. Uh, they hope for an opportunity to go into week number 10. Van Dorn to the outside. Trying to turn the corner. Good pursuit by Central. Van Dorn able to just pull it forward. He picks up about three out of nothing there on the far side of the field. Well, going to be third down and about three, three yards to go, Jeff, for a first down. 10.35 and counting to go. This second half briskly played, Jeff. That third quarter was a blur. Boy, I'll tell you what, though. This is a ball game is about two and a half hours in right now as this is, we've been blessed with a lot of long games this year. <laughs> we've had a lot of festivities to cover over the last four weeks Well, too. that just means more air time. Well, though. it so, does. You know, it's you not know, all terrible. It's not like we don't like that. <laughs> I didn't say there was anything wrong. <laughs> right. With it. Some people may, but we don't. <laughs> They're down at three <laughs> yards to go. Looked like a broken play. Morse takes the ball, and he is going to bang forward. I think he's, he's got it. Very close to. What happened is he landed on top of the, one of the Western would-be tacklers, and then as he was pulled forward, I think he's going to have the first down. Yeah, no doubt. He got it. They're going to give it to him. They're not going to measure. First and 10 for the Bay City Central Wolves at the Western 19-yard line. Ten minutes exactly to go in the football game. As Jensen Morris comes over and talks to Morley Frazier. Looking for win number 168 on his career as he's padding to. How about that chain gang down there? I'll tell you what, those guys have been around forever doing the chains, and they do a phenomenal job. Whatever I'm officiating on their side, you don't need to babysit those guys. They'll tell you how it's done. <laughs> it's not their first rodeo. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, the ball is down on the ground. As it looks like Unique might have coughed up his second ball tonight. I think the Western Warriors are going to have their hands on the football. I think Deming's got the football, Jeff. It is. It's a, it was turned over. Deming with a big fumble recovery, number 83 for the Western Warriors. Thane Deming, the junior. He's had a nice game tonight. Looked like the exchange problem was there. Didn't look like. Get, Unique had trouble teching that away. He really never got a good handle on it. Well, you know, and you got a new quarterback, some new running backs, and they probably haven't had a lot of work this week, Jeff. But uh, nice recovery by the uh, Demi for the Wolves or for the Warriors. Excuse me, nine twenty-eight to go. They'll have another opportunity. Can Parker Rivard end up with a couple of more catches, which will give him about ten for the game? I believe he's got about eight right now, and he has certainly been a weapon offensively. Bacicalupo, the quarterback, throws that ball out, and it looks like it's complete on the play. Adam Doty. He's had a good game tonight, Jeff. Played a little quarterback, a lot of wide receiver. And some I like, defense. I like the way that young man plays. They're going to give him a gain of about three yards on the play, second down and seven. They need chunk plays, though, with nine minutes and counting left in our fourth quarter. Yeah, they need a lot of yardage, Jeff, but you know what? No, no quit in these uh, Western Warriors. Nope, they are certainly going to fight to the end, and they got that turnover as Jeff Rao over there continues to try and spur on his troops. Here as we're coming up on the midway point of the fourth. Handoff right up the middle. A couple of broken tackles. First down and more. That big ball carrier is oh, Schley. Schley. I'm going to tell you what. He's a guy that runs straight load. north and south. That young man is a load. I like the way that way he plays, the way he runs. And, you know, I've said it once. I've said it a hundred times. He ain't going around you. He's going through you. Yep. He doesn't want to put a move no. on you. He wants to plant you. <laughs> and that's a nice 
First down uh, at the 34-yard line. As again, coming to the near side of the field, both Doty and Rivard, if there's a pass play, I would look for it to come to this side of the field. Motion to the near side Whoa. for trips. Nice job by Bocicalupo. He did a nice job to keep that from sailing over the top of his head, but big number 72, Jeremy Jacobs. That choo-choo train was on a <laughs> beeline for Bocicalupo. Jeremy Jacobs, a junior, Jeff, five foot ten defensive lineman, 223 pounds. Really, and a good job by Bocicalupo getting down and uh, trying to uh, not trying to overdo something and make uh, something out of nothing. Well, he had a very athletic play just to oh, bring yeah. that down because yeah. that thing would have sailed over his head for another 10 to 15 yard yep. loss. You're absolutely right. Looks like Doty now the quarterback, or is that still Bocicalupo? And that pass is complete for a minute and then incomplete to Doty from Bocicalupo, and we got a penalty flag. I think we're going to have pass interference. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take my hat off to that back judge. He just threw that thing about 15, 20 yards, that flag, and hit the spot exactly where the pass interference was. Well, when you're a back judge, Woo! you get very few opportunities to throw that flag. You might as well you wing it, brother. Well, you want it to be something special. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> it looked like a, a shuttlecock coming wow. across that field. He He's going to go home tonight, and he's going to be able to tell <laughs> Mama, you got to get the tide stick out. I was able wow. to throw the hanky tonight and got a little grass stain on ah, it. He's a hooker, too. He threw it left-handed. Yes, indeed. Southpaw style wow. with great finish on the play. It'll be <laughs> second down and three <laughs> yards to go for the Western Warriors. That was impressive. That used to come. Didn't even bounce. Yep, it was, uh, it was perfectly <laughs> done, but still not a first down nope. on the play. And the offense was all discombobulated. They're going to give five of that 15 back and make it second down at eight yards to go. These are the little things that really change it. On second and three, Mike, look at that playbook. It's wide open. It, it certainly is. And now you go second down and eight uh, for the Western Warriors. Coach Rawls over there giving Bocicalupo the play, or excuse me, Doty. And Bocicalupo. And Bocicalupo. Yep. So they're going to come in. They're going to say, okay, you can have it this time. I'll play <laughs> wide receiver. You can play quarterback. Okay. That's what they decided. <laughs> they were over there, paper, scissors, and rocks in it. <laughs> Doty again and Rivard to the near side of the field. Bocicalupo feels the pressure coming on. That ball picked off by the Bay City Central Wolves. That is number 24, Zavala. He's down the far sideline. He's got a blocker in front of him. Down to the one-yard line, sniffing the goal line. He can't get in, but another Turnover by the central defense. A nice job by Zavala reading that play. Jeff stepped right in front of the Bocicalupo pass. He took it all the way down inside the five-yard line to about the two. What a nice job by Zavala. That young man's had a nice football game tonight, too. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, though. The Western Warriors are just bitten by another yep. turnover tonight, and that has been the difference in this football game. Yeah, it's been a bugaboo tonight for the uh, Western Warriors, Jeff. We've got 7-18 to go in the football ball game. Central 41, Bay City Western 12. Morse up to the line of scrimmage. Offset eye backfield formation once again. Van Dorn, the seniors, trying to sniff the goal line. Look at the penetration defensively by number 24 on the play. Brendan Fader. And uh, he got a little bit of a knee in the head as he got up a little bit slow, but great penetration. He just was a missile looking to get to Van Dorn in the backfield. Yeah, another nice job. Well, you know who else is in there, Jeff? Number 44 for the Western New Warriors, that sophomore Taylor Pop. He's had a fantastic football game tonight. Boy, you got two more years oh, to look boy. at that young man, and Woo. he is something special already. You're absolutely right. Second down and goal. Still from just outside the two. Van Dorn up the middle, sniffing the goal line. He's into the end zone. It's another Bay City Central. Whoa! Touchdown! Six and 34 left in our ball game. And the Bay City Central Wolves are just having some fun. Uh-oh, do the math, coach. <laughs> oh. Running oh, clock. Oh, yeah, so you got to make the... Uh, nope. No, you got 35 right now. It's 35 yep. now. The extra point will make it 36. Yep. We'll be in a running clock situation. Yep. And, oh, Coach, I'm going to give you the opportunity out of the timeout to explain tips to one and all because <laughs> you become a master. <laughs> <laughs> young, well, at least somebody thinks I'm Young grasshopper, you've done well. <laughs> 
Walter for the extra point. He's been perfect all night long. Morse to hold for him and his attempt. I think he's going to go for the police cruiser on this one personally. <laughs> Snap is good. The kick is up. It's plenty long. Just sails over the police cruiser. Time out of the field with 6 and 34 left in the ball game. 48 to 12. Central on top over Western. We'll take a break and we'll explain tips right after this on BCTV. In 1916, Warren Miller chose Auto Owners Insurance for his new car. In 1947, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson in 1979. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. As we reflect on where we've been, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who put their trust in us, and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. Plum Harris Insurance Agency in Bay City is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Back here on Bay County TV, it says it all voted Michigan's best. Home of the Wolves, 167 victories for their head coach, Morley Frazier. Tops in the program history. How about that uh, game Man. tonight, Coach? Bay City Central's just had some big plays. Yeah, 48 to 12, Jeff. 634 to go in the football game. There's a high deep end over end kick. It'll be taken on about the nine yard line by the Western Warriors. Trying to come up and uh, get across field and we're gonna have two penalty flags and a hit out of bounds as Central's number 17, Trey Trevino comes up and just lays the wood to Bellinger who gets up a little bit gimpy and I think both of the officials saw exactly the same thing. Yeah, no doubt about it. It was a push in the back or holding. Jeff, take your pick. So it's going to go against the uh, Bay City Western Warriors. Uh, clock is stopped with 6.26 to go in the football game. 48 to 12. Central over the Warriors. Boy, I'll tell you, Western, they could still finish this season in style. They need to go down and uh, go coast to coast and yep. put this thing in the end zone. Yep, they've... Uh, Central's played pretty well defensively tonight, Jeff. Western has some, done some nice things with the football, just did not finish some of the plays. And we've got the running clock with the 36-point uh, leads. Now, the only time it can stop is on a timeout when it's an injury, when there's a penalty, or when there's a score. That is tips, Coach, and you are 13 for 13 on the season. That's a pass. Going to the wide side of the field. Oh, nice tackle. Van Dries tries to turn the corner. Bay City Central. Out there on defense, that is number 20 with the tackle. Nicholas Birdsell, he stayed home, did not give up, contained, and then finished. Well, you know, I like the way Van Dries played tonight, Jeff, and he's had a nice season for the junior. He's a young man that's going to come back next year and do some nice things for Western. So Owen Van Dries has had a good football game. As they come up to the line of scrimmage, on second down and eight yards to go. As the... Bay City Central coaches are coming down from upstairs already. They're looking to go down and just have some fun. Prevost with the tackle on that play with a tackle up high and plenty of help down low as that ball carrier for the Western Warriors. I did not catch the number. I thought that I had the number for the Western ball carrier and it was not the number I thought it was. Exactly five minutes ago, Jeff, in the football game for the, hard to believe, week number nine. Man, where did it go? Ooh. Wow. We be, did a lot of things this fall. Be very anxious to see how John Glenn able to do yeah. tonight if they can get a win and go five and four. Here comes the Western Warriors back across the green. Couple of broken tackles. And finally brought down is the sophomore quarterback, Carter Bacigalupo, gets the ball all the way up to the 40-yard line with, with that nice run across the grain division. Well, you know, Jeff, I like the way that young man plays, and he's only going to get better. You know, he's, uh, he's a sophomore. He's taken a little bit of his lumps, but he's learned a lot of football this year. He's going to be more comfortable next year, and I like the way that young man plays. I really do. I'll tell you somebody that could really get inside his head and do some good things for him is that Brian Elder took a minute and said, yep. young man is a sophomore. I know the pains that oh. you went through and some of the things that I had to use to learn from, but 
Look what another year does yeah, for absolutely. you. Absolutely, that's a great point. Bacigalupo back, and he throws a nice touch ball to Parker Rivard. Look at the hands as he comes back for the football at the 37-yard line. That is a thing of beauty. I'm going to tell you what, he is just poetry. Back shoulder again, Jeff, and Parker was watching it all the way, and he just came back and got the football, and Bacigalupo put it right where he had to. Nice job by those two young men. Yep, great communication. You can tell they've thrown a few oh, yeah. uh, passes back and forth to each other this year. As uh, Parker's got to have 10 catches in this football game as uh, he has had just a great job receiving the football tonight for the Western Warriors in his uh, final football game for Western. Yep. As Bacigalupo hands that ball right up the Whoa. cut to number 42 and Austin Whoa. Schley I'll tell you what Schley says even if you're on my offensive line you better move a hole for me because I'm going to just burrow my way through. Uh, that, was, that was just right over the <laughs> center right there Jeff and he was just running downhill there was no uh, nobody in his way until somebody with a purple helmet came and he ran right over that person too. He got almost six yards on the play second down and four yards to go. 244 and counting left in the ball game. Trying to come to the near side of the field and turn it upfield. Look at Central coming back. And we've got a penalty flag, and that's going to be one of the four situations that will temporarily stop the clock. And you'll say, boy, why do you call that block in the back? The game's over. It's a safety issue. Yeah, right, absolutely. The rub ball carrier is number 14, uh, Ethan Wanch, the senior getting his first action tonight for the uh, Western Warriors. And that'll take it all the way back to the 40-yard line. So it'll be second down and about 15 to go, 14 to go for the uh, Western Warriors. Ethan Dusso limped off the field for Bay City Central. Hope he's all right. Number 77, third down now, excuse me, second down and 14 yards to go from the 40-yard line of the Bay City Central Wolves as up to the line of scrimmage. Comes the Warriors. Counter handoff. Slay just bangs forward down to the 32 yard line. He's I think tough. I bet he eats nails for dinner. <laughs> he is a very good football player. He is absolutely fantastic, Jeff. He's uh, runs hard, he's good on defense. And uh, you know what? He's a senior. And I'll tell you what, it was it was a pleasure to watch that young man play for two games we saw. Yeah, and he's leaving it out on the field where yeah, it sure belongs he is. to. And sure that's just a beautiful thing to see. You know, the one thing you've got to say about this Western team, no quit. None. No quit in them. They don't know the meaning of the word. Wide receivers now. They're going to try a little halfback pass. They're going to throw this thing deep. It's a little bit underthrown, but up for it. And is it going to be Yeah, they caught? both have it. Yep, it is. Parker Rivard with the big catch. Parker Rivard again. Down at the three-yard line. Goes up and says, give me. I want this ball. And he pulls down another huge catch. I'm going to have to talk to the Golden Pen before this is done to find out how many catches he's got. It's a bunch. I don't know if there's a stat for bunch. <laughs> a whole. whole bunch. Yes. And again, it'll be first down and goal. It would be justice if they tried to get the ball to Parker Rivard. Bacigalupo's in, sniffing the goal line. He's into the end zone. It's a Bay City Western Warrior. Touchdown. Touchdown. Able to go 80 yards late in the football game. Got to be way. happy for yeah, him. That's a good. that's a good job by the Western Warriors, Jeff. Nice job. That was a good drive. That's exactly right. As we see uh, Brian Bishop going by right now, he was the uh, recipient of a wonderful award before the game, and nice he's got man. over 40 years of dedication to football as a player and a coach here yeah, at Central. He, he is a good, good man, Jeff. All, known Brian a long time. He used to listen to us in the deer blind when we were up on KJC up north in the Tawas area. That young man I grew up with. Uh, we went to church together, and he lived right next to my aunt and uncle, so the conversion is no good on the play. 
timeout temporarily as we are out of that tip situation with a wee 43 ticks left in the clock. Western probably is going to try their luck at an onside kick. Central's probably just going to take one knee, and then I will tell you that I will almost be certain that the official will not start that 25-second no. clock until there's 24 seconds left in the game. No, been a very entertaining football game, Jeff. We'll talk about it in the post-game show, but both teams play hard, very hard-hitting football game tonight. Both teams uh, came prepared, and uh, Central defensively did a nice job tonight. Yes, indeed. And I'll tell you what, great that both coaches were able to get uh, quite a few people on the field here late in yeah, the football yeah. game to reward them for their hard work all year long. I'll tell you what, Jeff, uh, you play nine weeks of football and you got about three and a hook of uh, preseason. It's a long season. And let's go back. This year we had extreme weather. It was hot for a very long time, and it's still warm going into this uh, ninth week. 73 degrees yeah. at game time when the officials are wearing short sleeve shirts in week nine. That's unheard of. October 20th, Jeff. It's been, it's been. Uh, there's the uh, trophy right there, the fireman's trumpet. Uh, that's going to go uh, to the uh, Bay City Central Wolves, and they're bringing that back out, Jeff, tonight. That's great to see. And they're just going to kick that thing deep. Look nice at hands. that great catch. Trying to slide up over the 40-yard line to the 41-yard line. And Central's going to take one knee, and this ball game's going to be done. Who's got that number 24? That's Zavala. Marcus Zavala, boy. Uh, yeah, good hands. He's got great hands. Look, like he had flypaper on the digits. Central probably going to go into their favorite formation, and that's victory. That's going to be a victory formation, Jeff. And, uh, Congratulations to Coach Fraser getting win number, if I'm not mistaken, 167. Correct. Life uh, for th his 32 years here at Bay City Central. Well, I'll tell you, he is just a great ambassador of the game. Up they'll come. And all they got to do is just snap at once. And that will be the last snap of the game. Like to thank Nate Doan and Matt Place for trying to keep us in line tonight. <laughs> Full-time work for those two gentlemen. Great to have them up here in the press box with us tonight, Mike, as we count down the last few seconds. Yeah, it was a good football game, Jeff. We got about 15 seconds to go. Nice sportsmanship. They're all shaking the referee's hands. You know what? Great football game. A lot of intensity, Jeff. Morley just got a bath. <laughs> And it couldn't have been happier to get it. <laughs> Two seconds, one second, and zero. That's all there is. There isn't any more. The final score in our ball game: the Bay City Central Wolves, 48 to 18, hoping to go on to week number 10. They'll find that out Sunday. We'll come back in just a minute as we'll do the post-game show right here on BCTV. Back at the post-game show here on Bay County TV, Jeff Dolan and Mike Wasdala. As you see the Central faithful out there, what you've got over the last four years is Central with freshman JV and varsity sweep all four years. That is unheard of. Yeah, that's uh, pretty impressive, Jeff, at, at all levels of the Central Wolves uh, getting the victories over the Western Warriors. But, again, a good, hard-fought uh, game by the Western Warriors. And I think you said it a couple times during the game. Did a lot of nice things, just couldn't finish, couldn't put it in the end zone. Too many mistakes and yep. turnovers tonight cost them drives. And that really was the one thing that changed the momentum in this football game. I think the uh, opportunistic central defense was the big uh, thing tonight, Jeff. They did a very nice job. Offensively, I thought they played very well. Elder did a nice job. Houston did a nice job. Um, Judson Morris was a really big factor tonight. But I think the uh, central defense really stepped up tonight and took a big step towards uh, getting them into the playoffs. Western Warriors, I'll tell you, Parker Rivard was a beast tonight. They went to him time and time again, and he delivered on each and every opportunity that came his way. Yeah, young man had a great football game tonight, Jeff. He went up and got the uh, got the ball. He, the back shoulder throw by Bocchigalupo was very nice tonight for the Western Warriors. Defensively, I think they did a nice job. I love Schley, the way that young man runs. Uh, very impressive. They've got some young talent on that Western team, and they'll be heard from in the future. Bocchigalupo and Pop are two of those sophomores that are going to have 
fun careers over the next two years. This sophomore year is a great learning experience for them and valuable experience. Well, and, and let's let's not remember remember the league we're in. We're playing in the Saginaw Valley. That's a tough football league, whether you're a senior or a sophomore. These kids have grown up. They'll learn. They'll be better next year. They'll get into the weight room. The off season will be good, and they'll be uh, become better leaders and take this team on their shoulders and, and to victories. And hats off to Coach Jeff Rao yep. too. I'll tell you. Very tough to have an 0-8 team come in here. He had them prepared. Never once did we say those kids lacked for effort, and I'll tell you that's something you got to tip your cap to. It was very impressive. They didn't quit. They played the whole game. Uh, Jeff Rawl did a nice job preparing his team for and his staff for this football game, Jeff. And, you know, this is a big game. It's, it's a rivalry, and, uh, you know, we said no matter what the records are, this is a big game for both schools. Sunday night they wait for Selection Sunday as they'll get their opportunity. Many prognosticators think with that win tonight, they get themselves into week number 10. Yeah, well, the word on the street is, Jeff, and if you're looking at uh, some of the uh, statistics and the points, it looks like if they want that, which they did, they won tonight. You know, Linden might be their next opponent in the first round of the playoffs. Down at Linden, I think Linden was undefeated going in tonight. So the Tigers have a good football team. But you know what? Anytime you're going up against the Bay City Central team and Morley Frazier, you're going to have your hands full. Indeed, fun night. Bay City Central, after giving up the first six, scored the next 28 and really changed this momentum in this football game. Well, it, it was really that 21, those three touchdowns in a row made a big difference. Momentum went towards Bay City Central. From that point on, it was all the purple and gold. But what a you know a good football game, great weather, fantastic atmosphere. And both sides, the rivalry, the kids were good, and everybody had a great time tonight. And they're all out there uh, chatting right now, too. So that's good sportsmanship. Great to see them intermingling amongst yep. each other because you know what? Before and after the game, you can be friends. You know, you got a job to do when you're between the lines and the chin strap is on. Well, you know, Tim Arsiniak and Judy Cox are good friends. They're both the principals at the, each school's staff, and they have a little bet every year. I don't know what it is this year, but uh, they have some fun with it, and they're good for the kids. And, you know, they, they sell. They did. It was, it's a lot of fun, and, and I was a part of a couple of these. It, it is a lot of fun. It's pretty special to be in a rivalry like this. Well, Coach, we know for sure we're going to have week number 10. Yep. The All Saints Cougars have got a ticket in. Hope that they can come up with a big victory against a Kindy tonight, and if they get that victory, we'll probably host a game. Otherwise, they'll be on the road next week, and I think there's a good chance that we'll be there. Yeah, we're going to be on the road someplace, Jeff. We haven't decided yet whether it's going to be at Bay City or with Bay City All Saints or the Central Wolves. We'll uh, see you on Sunday. What's going to happen? We'll, we'll talk about that on Monday. But you know, you look back nine weeks. Where did that go? What we we had some good football games. We saw some good kids and some. We saw some a lot of stuff this fall. We saw a young man last week get 703 yards oh. total offense, third in the history of the nation. That is something that uh, hopefully will be around long enough to have grandkids <laughs> to tell them about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you know, we saw, you know, we did our first swim meet. We did our first uh, Bay County Tennis uh, Championships. You were out at the Bay County Cross Country Championships, Jeff. You know, we covered a lot of stuff. We had a lot of fun, and we got a great uh winter season uh, schedule already we're going to put some more stuff together but uh all the support we had from all the booster clubs all the ad's all the superintendents all the all the administration uh we couldn't do without them and we appreciate them letting us come onto their campus and be part of their family well they've certainly treated us like kings and yes. uh, we couldn't be happier for that but Coach, uh, through nine weeks, it's always a pleasure to sit next well, to your brother, side. You've taught me well, and I'm 13 for 13, so I'm glad I haven't let you down. But another nice job by you, my friend, uh, your enthusiasm and uh, your love for the game and love for broadcasting. I appreciate sitting next to you. It's my pleasure indeed. Jared and Natalie Doan upstairs in the first half. Nick Page goes up in the second half. Let's Natalie Doan come down and do a little wow. production work. So she's starting to uh, – wet her appetite on some of that <laughs> stuff as well but it has just been a, a great football season and we're looking forward to week number 10 so I'll tell you any what, final thoughts any, coach? anybody looking for a camera we had we had uh, coach Frazier styling before the game the staff after the game but you know what that's what it's all about we're having a lot of fun with everybody well on behalf of the whole crew I'm here to remind you 48 to 18 central over western have a great night and we'll talk to you next week see you for the playoffs